Alrighty then, hello everyone, my name is Caden and welcome back to more Steins Gate, Linear Bounded Phenogram. Last time we did the Lukaku chapter, which was horribly depressing, but also very nice. Nice, but it was very interesting to, it allows us to also see what Lukaku exactly did during their own end, ending in uh, the first game. This time... Ooh boy, the Mayuri chapter. This is the one that I feel like I'm most curious about because first of all, we're in the alpha world line, so Mayuri is going to die. Are we going to watch Mayuri die in that case? Oh dear. <laughs> well, there's not a whole lot I can really do to stop this, so let's get into it. Eternal Polaris. Here we go. Oh boy. Last night, I had a really happy dream for the first time in a long time. In my dream, I went to Grandma's grave. Is this my Yuri's room? It's so cute. Her memorial service is tomorrow, but my dream let me see her a day early. I think I can have another dream like that tonight. You think I can have another dream like that tonight, Blupa? No. Oh. Among Myri's collection of various Upas, this one is her favorite. No. Oh. I wrote Blupa around my palm as I ask. Oh god, is this a day before her death? Round ears and short legs. A little twisted tail. Upa's just so adorable. Just looking at him makes me feel so relaxed. He's ever been as adorable as all those other popular mascots. Now with Hikon Hikonya, Shimi Shimiji-san, and Kumamon-man. Kuma You're the best, Upa. <laughs> what are these? A mascot character that, that's clearly designed to try to usurp Hikonya. Hikonya. He has big eyes and a super welcoming smile, but looking deep into his eyes reveals nothing but emptiness. Uh, a character that's risen to prominence almost by happenstance. E they've even released a CD. Its lackadaisical looking eyes are one of its charm points. It makes a strange noise when pulled from wood. There are multiple versions of Shimeji san. A charismatic mascot character representing a certain part of Japan. A black cat that wears a kabuto on its head. At one point, it. At one point, his popularity had exploded across the country, resulting in all kinds of merchandise. In fact, he was so popular that he ended up getting caught up in all sorts of adult problems. Was well, tragic past. Okay. But why do I even have that dream? Maybe it's because I want to talk to Grandma about everything that's been going on lately. Mayushi used to tell Grandma everything. She'd always listen to me and smile. Afterwards, she'd always let me eat some of her homemade dango. Grandma's Mayushi's very best friend. It doesn't... That doesn't change because she, just because she's up in the sky now. It hasn't changed and it will ever change. And you know, and you know what, Blupa? In Mayushi's dream last night, Okreen came along too. It's really, it really was an amazing dream. As amazing as Minkoro from Kitchen Jiro. <laughs> We're getting a lot of definitions. An item on Kitchen Jiro's menu, Menchi Croquette. An amazingly vol voluminous, voluminous combo containing Mayuri's favorite Menchi, Katsu, and, and a croquette. Isn't a croquette like a sweet? In the dream, I used to say goodbye to Mom and Niaris and went to Grandma's grave alone after the memorial service. But then Okarina appeared too. It surprised me, but it also made me really happy. It feels like we haven't been talking a lot lately, so I was feeling a little lonely. I must have been thinking about how I want to see Okarina too. <gasps> Alright, before I forget, I need to write down my diary. I can't forget these things if I don't. No. After putting Blue put back in its usual spot, I open my diary on, the, on my book. On my desk. I try to write only good memories in my diary. That way, when I feel sad or lonely, I can open my diary and read about happy things. That makes me feel a little better. I don't make myself write every day. 
Sometimes my Ishii only writes once a week, or even once a month. But when I have good dreams, I try to write them down. These days, I keep having scary nightmares, so I haven't written about dreams in a long time. In my dream, I went to Grandma's grave a little early, and then all of a sudden, Okreen was there too. I write down my memory of my dream in my diary. My Ishii didn't tell Okreen about visiting Grandma, so I was a little surprised. Well, I said, how did you know I was there here? Then Okreen said something like, I else always know where my hostage is. It made me kind of... No. No, it made me really happy. Okreen and I talked and talked like we hadn't done in a while. And afterwards, we ate dango together, too. Just like we always used to. We tasted really nostalgic. Dango always reminds me of Grandma, so the flavor was a little sad. But they were delicious and brought back happy memories. There. I really hope that dream comes true. Until I started high school, Okreen always came to visit Grandma's grave with me. I remember those visits. The dango we ate in the dream were the same ones Okreen and I always ate together. They tasted exactly the same and were de super delicious. The flavor reminded me of the ones Grandma used to make. I can't forget to eat some after Grandma's memorial service tomorrow. Okreen's so strange. He's always there to me up when I'm feeling down, and he's been showing up in Mayushi's dreams a lot lately. These days, whenever I have a nightmare, Okreen always shows up in the dream to try to help me. Whenever Okreen appears, he looks like he's in a lot of pain. It makes me sad. This is her being able to see all the different, uh... All the different, uh... Realities where she does die. Okreen's always looked after Mayushi, and now he's always doing it, even in my dreams. Is that okay? Does it mean that I can rely on Okreen too much? Okreen's just too kind. He may be a super size cinder and have a bad case of Chunibyo, but Okreen's very, actually very, very kind. If you spend a lot of time with him, you can tell. When Grandma died and Mayushi couldn't even talk because of the shock, Okreen always looked out for me and supported me. Just being around him feels really relaxing and comforting. I always wish that Okreen would be there beside me forever. In my dreams, Okreen tells me to stay the same and not to change at all, but... I think Okreen would say that in real life, too. But I guess I can't really do that, can I? I sigh, poking at the heads of my upas. Mayushi doesn't want to be a burden on Okreen. It really seems like Okreen has a very big problem that he's been keeping to himself. And I think the cause probably has something to do with me. Yet sometimes Okreen will stare at my face for, for a while. He looks for reassured for a second, but then his face darkens with pain. Whenever I see Okreen do that, my chest hurts and it makes it hard to breathe. Okreen's so kind that sometimes I feel really bad and want to apologize. I know that I'm a really heavy burn to Okreen, but I don't know why. It just makes me sad that I can't do anything. I've tried to ask him the reason, but when I did, it seemed like he didn't want, want me asking, so I decided against it. Hey, Grandma. I close my eyes and put my ear to Pocky, a keepsake pocket watch from Grandma. Literally just says that word for word, basically, almost. The ticking of the watch is like Grandma's heartbeat. Doing this makes me feel so calm. It makes me feel like Grandma's always right there, ready to listen to me. I guess my Yushi can't say Okreen's hostage forever, huh? One day, I need to grow up. I've always known that, really. But... At the end of my diary entry, I write down, Graduate from hostagehood in small letters. But when I see those words, I start to get really scared. I quickly erase them. A way to graduate from being Okreen's hostage. Well, I've thought of one way. But if possible, I'd rather do anything else. I need to look for a better way. There has to be something I can do. 
I look up at the night, the night sky from the open window. I look for the same star I always do. I found it right away. Because that star is always in the same spot. Polaris. A star that shines brightly in the northern skies. When I look up at Polaris, always twinkling in the same place, I start to relax. I wish my Ichi could be just like it. And never have to change. No. Today is a very important day. Grandma's memorial service is being held. But since the ceremony is in the evening, Maishi stopped by coming with Kai-chan and Fubuki-chan bright and early in the morning. Kai-chan, Fubuki-chan, and I are part of something like a cosplay club. Club. Mean costumes is Maishi's specialty. The other girls just wear them. This year, Kamiwa is just as busy and intense as ever. If anything, Kai-chan and Fubuki-chan's cosplay is even more popular than us than last year. They're surrounded by semi. <sighs> Sorry. Surrounded by semi photographers. Seeing the two of them wearing my Uchi's handmade cosplays and surrounded by photographers with their shutters clicking non stop made me proud to have worked so hard. I can't get my mind off of Ocarine. It was hard to stay focused at Kamima. Hmm. I left earlier than I expected to. Expected to and headed to the station, pulling my cart full of merchandise along with me. And my other hand was a bouquet of lilies I bought I just bought at the florist. They're for grandma's memorial service. They're so pretty. Mm, they smell so nice. I wonder if grandma will like them. When I visit a grave by myself, I only take one flower, but I upgrade to a bouquet for ceremonies. Flowers are surprisingly expensive, and even between my allowance and pay, I don't even have enough. I don't have enough money to buy nice flowers. I can only do this because mom and dad are my sponsors. Kai Chen, Alright, Chen, you didn't seem very cheerful coming out today. Are you okay? Did you work too hard making all the cosplay by yourself? Be careful of heat stroke. Thank you for ma always making such wonderful outfits. Good view. I think this. Is the Sengoku Sabara Kostuga costume was a big hit. There were a lot of low anglers, but I gave them plenty of fan service. I'll be sure to treat you to a castle siege parfait at the Sengoku Butler Cafe. Great work. I mean it. Have a great good rest. Sorry for worrying you. I get totally immersed in making news cosplay, and then I don't even realize that I'm overworking myself. Did I work really hard? Did I really work too hard? Kostuga cosplay... It'd be the hard for most cosplayers to pull off, but you have a great figure, Kai Chan. I really, it will really, it really fit you well. So sexy that even my heart was racing. That sounds incredible. Is there really a parfait like that? My issue best is delicious. Thanks. Looking forward to it. I don't know which of these to choose. When in doubt, follow my airy stomach. Also, we gotta take a look at what you've got, my airy. A little oopa. <laughs> and of course. Satisfying. All right, apologies. And I'm an adult and start making real money. My Yushi wants to bring Grandma a bouquet of flowers that takes both hands to carry. I want to do that someday. Someday. Once I graduate high school and graduate university, I try thinking about what comes next. I see a businessman man dressed in a suit hurrying into a building and, ch and try to to um, and try to imagine myself wearing a suit like that. I don't think it looked very good on me. An adult me. I can't even imagine that yet. At school, they gave us career path guidance forms, but none of it really feels real to me. What kind of adult will my issue become? What kind of job will I have? Will I be an office worker? Will I even be good at my job? What will the other lab members be doing by then? What's going to happen in the lab? I think she wants to be friends with everyone forever. I'm sure it'll be impossible to spend every day together like we do now. But I hope that even when I'm an adult, the lab members can get together and have another of Okreen's whatever or 
table meetings. There is! Mayushi here. Mayushi, I need, I need your help, yeah. Oh no, what do you need, Ferris? Ferris chan, what's wrong? Are things extra busy at the cafe? That's right, yeah. I mean, Yan just called out of work last minute, so the cat has to feel over here. Unless I'm going to be so busy that we'll need my Yushi's help, Nia. I know you're busy with coming out today, but please. That sounds tough, but that actually works for my Yushi. I came back from coming out early today. Should I head over? Yeah, that would be so great. You really saved us, my Yushi, but it's your day off. So are you sure about coming in, Nia? Of course, Nia. I'm sure we've got a lot of customers visiting Tokyo for Kamima, so I really shouldn't have, have asked for the day off. I'm happy to help. You're the best. I think we can manage if we can get, we can get through lunchtime, yeah. We should only need your help for a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna take the Super Express train back. I'll be back. I'll be there in three minutes. Yeah, my deepest gratitude, yeah. This is also cute. I can't wait to see how it all goes straight down to hell very quickly. Right now, maybe being too busy to even think is for the best. Otherwise, I won't be able to stop thinking about ochreine. I pretend to roll up my sleeves to get myself pumped up. Then, pulling my cart along with me, I make a run for the station. Oh, we got mail. It's not just delicious, it's also just super fun to eat. It's really crazy. Try it next time. Hurry back to Akuma and, and to make Queen plus Neon squared. Wow, look at this line. I couldn't even see the end of the line staring at the entrance of make Queen plus Neon squared. I can feel an intense passion radiating, radiating from all the customers. Or rather, Master. If they're this passionate, I need to be too. I earn a cafe from the rear entrance. Once I change my uniform, I put on a big smile and skip out to the hall. <laughs> Thank you for waiting, Nya. My Yushi Nya Nya is here. <laughs> my Yushi, you're finally here, Nya. I also have to try and be more quiet. <laughs> Sorry. With tears in her eyes, Ferris John leaps into my arms to hug me. She reminds me of a real purring cat jumping into my lap. Compared to the air-conditioned cafe, Ferris John's body is warm and soft. Feels nice. But when she hugs me, I feel like the masters are watching us very closely. Or am I imagining things? Some of them are yelling stuff like it's too much. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Thing from the character Suzuhi Tomeo, who appears in the anime Berry Panic. It's a by version of her catchphrase, it's too much for me to take. Typically used when faced with the Yuri Lay. Thank you. <laughs> The approach approach female cosplayers and idols from a low angle can be, be found where cosplayers congregate, such as Kamima or Akibara's pedestrian heaven. But my Ishii's not too much at all. You're a big help, Nya. Bears expect nothing less from a My Ishii. My sword and sister are from, from, from a past life, Nya. Sword and sister? Oh! Like the swords from It's Just As Maria Says, Nya. Oh boy. Why is... Hang on. Mayuri is the one who's getting the most, uh, tips made, I feel. I swear. Uh, swear. Uh, speaking of swear. Um, swear. A system in place at a Catholic all-girls high school designed to have the young girls learn about proper etiquette from the older girls. When the girl, young girls steps across from the older girls, the pact is complete, making them proper sisters. Okay. Fictional girls novel that takes place in Catholic all-girls... Due to the swear system used at the high school, the novel blew up with not just female warriors, but fans of Yuri as well. Thank you, game. Exactly, yeah. Does that mean Ferris Chance my Yushi's older sister in you? Yes, yes, your older sister. <laughs> now you see, now you see, now see your my, my Yushi. Your ribbon is crooked. Making a famous scene from It's Just As Maria Says. Paris John fixes the ribbon on my maid outfit. Your older sister knows everything. As she tied my ribbon, Ferris John stares at me from below. I swear I'm gonna need water all day, all this entire stream. Yeah. 
just open my throat and stick a pipe that's put, gushing a consistent supply of water over my throat so it's not getting worn down, I swear. <sighs> I gotta wake up first. <sighs> Couple hits to the face should help. <sighs> Hair's chance large eyes sparkle with light. It makes me feel as if she can really read me, and I can't help but look away. Hair's chance says Smartin has really good intuition, so how oh. Mighty is something wrong, yeah? Uh oh. She really is sharp. Oh uh, no, it's nothing, yeah. Oh really? Yeah. If there's anything ever on your mind, you can always talk to your older sister, Nya. She gives me an her big hug. I really don't see a chance against Ferris Chan. Thanks. I'm still very scared how this, this is going to end with Mayuri dying, isn't it? I'm just terrified of that. <laughs> it only can end one way at this point. There's no other way it's going to end. It can't end any other way. We're in the Alpha World line. This is going to end up with us actually viewing from my perspective what it's like to die. Great. <laughs> Unless some sort of miracle occurs that breaks us free from that potential. Anyway, for the time being, forget about your problems. Focus on serving the Master, yeah. I'm sure I'll help you feel better. Let the Master give you some energy, yeah. Suck it up from that. <laughs> You suck my energy from me, some of the masters freeze their fists and holler. Right, I'll do my best, yeah. Help a spirit, yeah. As it popped up up by Ferris Chan's top class smile, my strange smile becomes a real one too. Ferris Chan's always so powerful and bright. She gives energy to everyone around her. If someone's feeling down, she notices right away and pulls them into her own world to give them strength. I hope Mayushi can be like Ferris Chum one day. Good work, Mayushi. You can head out whenever you want, yeah. You're a lifesaver. Oh, it's lunchtime over, are you? Surprised by Ferris Chum's words, I look at the clock. It's already one past 1.30 p.m. Closer to the death. Last call for lunch hours is already over. Most days it felt like time ticked by so slowly, but this lunchtime went by a, like a whirlwind. Things were so busy, it felt like my head was spinning. In fact, I think it might have been. I was so busy that I lost track of what I've been doing halfway. Okay, I don't know why. This is getting completely off track for a second here, but for some reason when you say your head's spinning, the only thing that I'm think able to think of is a game that I've been playing recently called Rhythm Doctor. There's a samurai in there that just... I, s I don't know why, but his head keeps spinning. <gasps> Great game, by the way, Rhythm Doctor. It's like a one, it's only a, it's a, it's a rhythm game that's like one button that only uses like one button. Check it out if you like rhythm games. That game's fantastic. I've been actually halfway tempted to play through it on recording. There'd be some technical issues I'd have to deal with, but I, I'd be willing to try and overcome them if it means I could get two to do that. Anyways, that's uh, another time. Sorry. <gasps> I was so busy I lost track of what I'd been doing halfway through. My mind started to wander as I drew an endless series of pictures and messages on the master's omelets. If someone had me a bottle of ketchup right now, I think I'd automatically start drawing something. Unless I'm always the toughest, but now that's over, I'll be okay. Leave the rest of Ferris now. Okay, thanks. Sorry for choosing such a busy day to take off. No worries, yeah. We get extra pay during Kaima, so it's fine. That's good. Mayuji, are you feeling better, Nya? Damn. Hey, thank you, Ferris Chan. It's good to keep, keep busy when you got something troubling you, but then it's important to deal with the root of the problem, Nya. Deal with the root of the problem? All you need to do is have a good, legit talk with whoever you're troubled about, Nya. Legit. That's right. You aren't. There aren't very, very many problems you can solve all on your own, yeah. I guess. I'm just thinking about all of the ifs and maybes right now. That's the problem. Your imagination is just your imagination. The problems won't get solved until you hand them in real life, yeah. 
I see. Don't give up. You work great, yeah. Not the worst advice, Ferris. I mean, she's not wrong. You get sometimes you just gotta buckle down and get to the heart of the problem. It's painful when you try and do that, sure, but sometimes that really is the only way you can get it get through, isn't it? Okay, thanks. She has a point. I've been talking less and less with Ogreen lately. Maybe Ferris chance right. Maybe I should get a, have a good long talk with Oak. Hmm. Hey. Maybe I should have a good long talk with Oak Green soon. I feel like I've begun to see part of the of a solution to this problem. After getting changed in the changing room, I decided to leave my stuff at the lab before going to the memorial ceremony. I thought it might be nice if I could see Oak Green while I was there too. Could Oak Green be at the lab right now? I hope I'll be able to see him. I know that having serious conversation with Okreen is important, but I notice myself trying to talk around it. No, that's not right. I, I don't hope I can see him. I need to see him. Just like Ferris Chan said, I need to have a talk with Okreen. I make up my mind so I have to take out my cell phone. Instead of relying on coincidence, I need to make sure we can get some time to talk. I just need to put my thoughts into action. I try calling Ocarine. I'm really nervous for some reason. I asked my Yushi become such a heavy burn on Ocarine. He wants to know, but I'm also scared to ask. He doesn't pick up. I'm disappointed, but also a little relieved. I should send a message instead. To Ocarine. Do do do. It's my Uji. Hey, Ocarine, you know, you worried about something? You, you've looked really stressed lately. You know, is there anything my Uji can do to help you, or can you not talk to me because it's me? That's really sad and hurtful. Telling someone about your uneasiness is a really scary thing. My thumbs tremble as they touch the keyboard. If you think I'm a burn, please just tell me. I finish typing the final letter, then deeply sigh. My fingers hover above the send button, but I just can't make myself press it. If I don't know what's making Okreen so sad, there's nothing that my she can do for him. I gather up my courage and finally press the, s the send button. <sighs> I sent it. Will Okreen reply? I want to, but at the same time, I don't. It's really complicated. But it's better than leaving the problem as it is without making any effort. I put away my cell phone, raise my head, and look straight ahead and begin to walk. I feel a little better now that I sent the message. I didn't get any reply from Ocarina on my way to the lab. Maybe he hasn't read my messages yet. Ocarina isn't the type to check his phone that often anyway. I wonder what Ocarine's up to right now. Ocarine was at the lab, but Darkun was. He's curled up on the sofa with a mound of thin books, paging through one and, and breathing heavily. Oh, it's you, Darkun! Oh, Mayushi! Otsu! I thought you'd still be at Kalima. You're back already? These amateurs don't know that the real battle starts first thing in the morning, SMH. Once I snagged all the merch I wanted and grabbed some lunch, I came back here. Wow, Darkun. Legit Otaku really are something else. I mean, I'm legit, but you don't have to put it like that. Why don't you take my, a look at my loot with me, Mayushi? I was just perusing it myself. Check out all the wa my waifus. Do I have to? Darku and Maishi have very different tastes. I might want to read Kuka's Yui's Jujinshi. You're more into the extra saucy ones, right? These refer to a type of Jujinshi in which the cover typically features a uh, scantily clad character. Typically, one can judge the kind of content inside said Jujinshi based on its cover. Thank you, game. A thin book that is an extra saucy has no right to call itself a thin book, SMH. 
Anyway, Darkoon, where are Okri and Christian? Have they come to the lab today? Ugh, again! My ears, she completely ignored my comments! Oh god, she's good. That's the best! Oh, and, uh, I, I haven't seen either Okrina or Moxie she today. Okay. You need them for something? Not really. It's nothing urgent. I bet those two are off being disgusting normies together or something. Probably. D damn, really? <gasps> To be honest, my issue sometimes thinks that they really might be together, so I get dark and a nod of agreement. Come on, my issue, don't agree with that. Mog thinks she might be kind of a normie, but there's no way an ultra junibio like Cream would join her in normie dom. Mm hmm. Do you think so? Sure do. Thanks, Darkoon. Huh? But for what? Oh, don't worry about it. It's your toasty day, though, huh? Kanye was so hot and sticky that I got all sweaty. No. Daru. What? Didn't I say sweaty? Yeah, probably, but that would that that would have made more sense, but Mayushi, could you say it's so hot I'm totally Daru, shut the fuck up. <laughs> It's so hot. But no! No! That's what I want to hear! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! That's what it's all about! <laughs> Daru, shut up. Darkin seems very excited for some reason. Oh, my music's going then. Huh? Already? Yep, I'm just going to drop off my stuff. The memorial say. Oh, was that today? Well, I'll see you later then. But before that, could you say that line one more time? Why? Was it something perverted? Well, uh... <laughs> oh, Green, tell me that whenever you try to make me say something perverted, I'm supposed to say, I can't agree to the... Either, I can't guarantee the safety of your wife, though. Oh, God. What? <laughs> What is O Green plan on doing to my <laughs> No <laughs> This is about to be Daru's worst day ever if I have any if O Green has anything to do about it, say about it. Who knows? Not my Yushi. Uh, fine then. Next time I'll be more stealthy about it. I think you might be missing the point. With a laugh, I start to make my way out of the lab, but then I freeze in my tracks. Um, by the way, Darkun. Hmm? Huh? Can I ask you for a favor? I should make some preparations just in case I need to act on that plan. You want a favor from me? What is it? Um, yeah, um, if I ever came down to it, can I ask you to support me? Uh, support? That's right. And could you not tell anyone else about this? Does everyone else include Ocarine? Yeah. It kind of seems like you're up to something. Well, the reason is... I'd really appreciate it if you didn't ask. It's something really important, though. Okay, got it. I promise this stays between you and me. Thank you, Darkin. And if you'd like to thank me, how about letting me record that line you said earlier? Oh, come on, Darkun. Nothing's very loud. I'm begging you! I guess I need, do need to thank you, though. If you want me to record something non perverted that'd be fine. But I'm so good at coming up with perverted stuff. Uh, well, anyway, I'm always down to help you out, Mayushi. Uh, there's really no need to thank me. <laughs> You're being so nice. It warms Mayushi's heart. We're both lab mems, right? You don't have to make such a big deal about it. Lab mems really are the best, huh? Next time I usually give Darku my, my juicy chicken number one. Hmm. Will you feed them me? Daru? Get out. Sure, why not? Mayuri, no. 
Whoa, what a perfect situation. How oh, decent. Would I be betraying my 2D waifus and the perfect fair son too? Wait, what am I saying? There's always a harem route. This man is beyond saving. Darkin starts to mumble himself. We'll see you later, Darkin. Later! I didn't see your cream, but now I have a little relief if worse comes to worse. I really hope there's that something bad doesn't happen, but if it does... That mail. It's her mom. Myri, don't forget to buy flowers for Grandma's memorial service. It's her mom. Oh, what a worry you were. My age, she would never forget. I made sure to buy a very nice bouquet on the way back, back from Kamima. A big white bouquet of lilies, the ones Grandma loved so much. Huh? I look at my right hand, then my left hand, and then inside my bag. Did you forget them somewhere? It's gone. Huh? I tell my hand think for a while. Oh no, what should I do? They must have gone Grandma's flowers somewhere. Where did I drop them? They're so important. If they're anywhere, they're probably at the lab or May Queen. First, I call Darukun. Daru, please. Yes, hello? Hi, Darukun. Um, I'm gonna ask if you. I wanted you to ask you if Mayushi left the bouquet of flowers behind just now. A bouquet? But Mayushi, you weren't carrying any flowers when you came in. The key was already gone by the... My right. I think I misplaced it somewhere. I have to answer you, Mayushi. It takes some next level zone, zone and out to misplace something that big. Ugh, I guess Mom knows Mayushi very well then. I dropped my shoulders and let a small groan. I need to find it. If it's not the lab, I think it's probably at May Queen. Do you need help finding it? No, I should be okay. Alright, but if you can't find it, give me another call. Okay, talk to you later. Well then, guess I should contact Ferris Chan. Ferris! Forget, forgot the flowers. Sorry, I think I forgot the flowers at the cafe. Can you check the changing room during your break? There you go. Maybe I should head back to Make Queen. Uh. I started to move in that direction, but less than a minute later, Ferris Chung called me. Hi. Hello, nice to here. Maishi, I saw your message. The flowers are inside the changing room on the top of your locker, Nya. Yeah. Really? Thanks so much, First Chan. It's a very important bouquet. You saved me. He didn't need to mess with me, though. You can call me anytime, Nya. Yeah. But you seem so busy today that I didn't want to bother you. We're swears. So, there's no need to hold back, Nya. Yeah. Now lunch is over, we're totally okay. It's all thanks to your help, Maishi. Okay, then I'll stop by and pick it up. I'll be waiting, yeah? Ah, <sighs> what a relief. I managed to find Grandma's flowers after all. Happy Mo was interrupted by my growling stomach. Come to think of it, I've been so busy that I forgot to eat lunch. Once I realize I'm hungry, my stomach starts growling until I can't bear it anymore. Hunger is a big problem for Mayushi. I happen to a nearby convenience store. After buying some food, I returned to my path. So yummy. I pop a Takenoko village cookie in my mouth and it fills with a wonderful sweet taste of happiness. What I really want was some chow down chicken, but there's no Lanza stores around Akihabara Station. Now I found Grandma's flowers and my stomach is happy, I take a good Look at my surroundings. The main street, Chuodor, is always, always busy, but it's especially busy today. A lot of people look like they came from Kamima. <laughs> More water. Tori? 
Hey, Yvonne got a, a big Mike character co a covered shopping bags neon and satisfied looks on their faces. Like victorious warriors returning from battle. He must have really enjoyed Kamima. Just watching him makes Mayushi happy too. If Okarim were here, he'd say something like, Look at, look, the people are like garbage and laugh like, <laughs> Wait. No. <laughs> Hearing her do that. <laughs> A line that the evil Mujka. Mujka? Mujka? Says in the film, Building in the Sky. Used when looking down on others. The people are like garbage. He still hasn't gone back to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's so perfect. <laughs> oh, my Yuri. Oh. Hello, Mom? Oh, Yuri, do you have the flowers for the ceremony? Of course I do. He paused for a second there. Are you sure everything's okay? It's fine. I just forgot something, so I need to go back and pick it up. <laughs> Off I go to go get it now. Was that something you forgot the flowers by any chance? I swear, Mayuri, you're always like this. Will you be there in time for the ceremony, at least? Of course, but you can head over there without me, Mom. Mayuri will meet you there. Is her going to be late? How late? Maybe 15-ish minutes? Alright then, be careful. Don't wander off with any strangers. I won't see you. Ah, uh, what? Hmm? I think someone must have called my name. I stop in place. I look all around me. There are too many people here. I can't tell who it was. Was I imagining things? I look at my head and start walking again. Uh, Mayuri, over here! Can't you hear me? This time I heard clearly. I'm not just imagining things. Christian's voice. I get my toes and squint my eyes in the direction of her voice. I wonder if everything's okay with her. Her voice sounded really desperate just now. When I finally spied Christian's brown hair in the crowd, I called out to her. Christian! Over here! I wave my arms at Christian. For a second, I lo she looks like she's about to start crying, then begins to wa wave back to me. I do my best to weave through the crowd towards her. For some reason, she's just standing there, dazed. Christian! I'm sorry. I didn't notice you over the crowd. I'm... Huh? I'm right here. Christian? Kurisu? Christian's body was shaking. She was acting like nothing like the cool and collected Christian I know. Something must have happened. This is weird. Why is she acting so different all of a sudden? I take her hand and look in her eye. Christian, are you okay? Did something happen? Mayuri. Uh, no, uh, nothing. It's nothing. She seemed dazed for a little while, but she managed to collect herself and go back to her usual self. But something was wrong. She's acting so odd. What should I say to her? While I was thinking, Christian squeezed my hand right back and replied, I'm fine. How about you, Mayuri? Is everything okay? Are you well? Has anything happened? Oh, wait a minute. She's time bleeped, hasn't she? If she's acting so odd, the only thing I can think of is that she's time bleeped. This might be a future Kurisu that's trying to. You know, it's just, just trying to deal with uh, Myri's death. In that case, this is different from the base game. I mean, it's, it is still the alpha world line, but 
at the same time, I'm pretty sure we never really saw Karisu use the time leap machine. But judging by how she's acting, I think there's a good chance she's used the time leap machine. Her grip is alarmingly firm. Her cold fingertips are still shaky. Christian, my she's always great. Nice and energetic. I see. That's good. I'm worried about you, Christian. Mayuri. Mayuri. She's always here to listen, okay? So you never have to hold back with me. But. Hmm? I'm not. I I'm not used to talking to people like that. Well, you can get used to it with me, right? Mayuri. Mayuri. I want to make Christian feel better somehow. Like how Ferris John helped me feel better. I try to think of a good way. I think hard. Before I know it, I popped a tiny Takenoko village cookie into Christian's mouth. <laughs> Eat the cookie. <laughs> Eat the cookie. <laughs> what is this? Chocolate? Um... It's a charm to help you feel better. <laughs> this girl walks up to you, shoves a cookie in your mouth, <laughs> leaves. What? <laughs> a, a charm? Not really. I just made that up. But I think that eating yummy food helps you feel better. Do you feel a little better now? Do you want another one? Maishi eats another one too, and then I smile and hand another one to Chris Christian. Christian might say that germs and stuff like that are unscientific and refuse to believe in them. But I think that eating yummy food is very effective. <laughs> I see. Are these charms some sort of Japanese magic? Interesting. There's no scientific basis, but it's a good example of the placebo effect. They're actually quite effective. Um, Maishi doesn't know anything about the placenta. <laughs> Oh. But if they weren't, I'm happy. Not the percent. Uh, thank you, Mayuri. I guess I wasn't really feeling like myself. How embarrassing. No worries. It's nice to see Christian acting more normal again. Mayuri, are you going anywhere today? Oh yeah, I am. I'm doing something with my mom. I see. Well, I'll see you. Without looking directly at me, Christian smiles. Their smile seems so strained that I feel like I just can't leave her alone. So, I, so as Christian tried to disappear into the crowd, I grabbed a hold of her sleeve. You ain't escaping. What is it? Well, I'm Christian. Why don't you come with me? But, Myri, you said you were busy. I am, but I need to stop by the cafe first. Christian, do you like me, cafes? Mega cafes. Well, I admit that I'm curious, but actually going in seems kind of daunting. It's not something I'd... It's not really something I'd usually do. The Nyan Nyan parquets at the cafe are reminds rem you works are amazing. I'm sure Ingwen will get you back to full power. A full power? You mean like a sensor beam? Er, I mean, that was a little... Uh, just pretend I didn't say that. Is that a Dragon Ball thing? Because I swear I've heard that in reference to, like, Dragon Ball or something. At the very least, I know there's some sort of bean, and I feel like I've heard the word Senzu be referenced in... For Senzu... I feel like I've just heard Senzu bean in reference to Dragon Ball. But I'm not too sure on that. Don't quote me on that. Exactly. So why don't you come with me? It'll be my issue street. I see. Well, uh, since you were offering, I guess I could come with you for a little while. Then let's go! Mr. Kurisu, allow me to I firmly took Christian's arm in mine, and began walking her towards May Queen. I'm sure Ferris Chan will, um, will cheer her up. She may have to cheer up Mayushi after all. With this belief in my heart. I'm still scared that Mayuri's going to die. <laughs> and we're gonna be watching it from her perspective. <laughs> I went back to the shop and introduced Christian to Ferris-chan. 
To be honest, my Yushi wanted to eat the Nyan Nyan Parfait with him too, but I was already running late and I didn't want to make my mom wait any longer. I see you really have to manage if I could use my paycheck to cover for Chris Chan's Parfait on my way out. Way out. I hope Ferris Chan and Chris Chan get along. With Grandma's flowers in my Yushi's hands this time, I met up with Mom and we made our way to the temple. At the temple, we held Grandma's ceremony with some of our other relatives. Afterwards, Maishi said bye to everyone and walked to Grandma's grave alone. It had been a while since I had a lo nice long talk with her. The cemetery is silent. Nobody was around, or nobody was supposed to be. Huh? In front of Grandma's grave was someone wearing a familiar lab coat. Okarin! Sitting with his elbows in his lap, and with his hands folded in throughout his face, Okarin seemed to be thinking. He raised his face after Mayushi called out to him. Mayuri. Mayuri. The moment I saw Okarin's troubled, troubled looking eyes, my unhappy feelings of seeing him start to shrink away. Okarin, Okarin what are you doing here? Oh my, oh my. I was waiting for you. But Mayushi didn't tell Okarin about coming here, right? A mad scientist always knows where his hostage is. It's just like this is just like my dream. But when he said that, Okreen looked so pain. It's much more than in my dream. And seeing that makes my heart hurt too. It's absolutely silent around us. This silence is so scary and uncomfortable. I have to say something. I'm really surprised. I had a dream that Okreen would by Mayushi at Grandma's grave? And this feels just like that. Oh. This morning I was thinking about how nice it would be if the dream came true, but... Listening to Mayushi's words, Okreen smiled. It was a weak, bitter smile. Of course the dream came true. It's as if he knew this would, hap would all happen. But, Okreen, you look so sad. Maybe I shouldn't have wanted the dream to come true at all. Don't say that. But, Hokari, Mayushi is such... Not a burden. Hokari said the words before I could. Hokari... You are not a burden. I've never, ever felt that way about you, I swear. How? How'd you know what I was going to say? I think her way is too high for us to just be a dream come true. The term used in usually popular robot anime from the 90s, and it said anime, the term was used to refer to the pilot's aptitude for controlling the giant robot, along with synchronicity. This is commonly used when two people happen to agree on something. Is this some kind of movie, and he's memorized all the lines. Such a feat is nothing for you and Gyoma. You know it goes through every single month. I walk up to Okreen and crouch in front of him. I put the bouquet in his lap and make myself off level with his sitting height. And I put my hands on Okreen's hands and gaze into his eyes. Okreen, there's something wrong with you lately, isn't there? There's always been something wrong with me. With a sulky expression, Okreen averts his gaze from mine. He still gets stubborn the same way he did when we were kids. That's true, but there's definitely something wrong. You could at least kind of disagree with me. But there really is something wrong. Myri, I apologize for making you uneasy, but right now, I don't want to talk about it. If you wait, I'll explain everything. I'll tell you anything you want to know when the time comes, so please. With Okreen looking even more desperate than in the dream, I can't say another word. I don't want to hurt him anymore. I don't know the reason, but I still think Okreen's hurting a lot because of my Yushi. Okay. I get it, Okreen. Mayuri. I'm sorry that I'm always relying on you, Okreen. Don't apologize. It's me who needs to apologize. That's not true. I was going to say that, but I thought it would hurt Okreen even more, so I tried to find something else to say. Hey, Okreen. 
Why don't we go eat some dongo like we always used to? My Ishi's getting hungry. Sure. Eating yummy things will make you feel better, okay? Mayuri, you just love food, don't you? How wonderfully simple. Oh, Queen's expression soften. It's not just Mayushi. All of humankind loves food. I puff up my cheeks in protest. Even compared to the rest of the humankind, you're a pretty big eater, Mayuri. What? No way. I don't think so. Mayushi's normal. But you're always eating something, whether it's a banana or fried chicken. What, you really think so? I do. Anyway, I can't leave you hungry, Mayuri. I now sense you to eat dongo until you cannot eat a single dongo more. Okay, I'm always fine with a punishment like that. Seemingly acting more like his normal self, Ogreen stands up. But before that... I lay Grandma's flowers in front of her grave, put my hands together, and close my eyes. I can feel all Green's presence behind me. It's absolutely silent. There were a lot of things I wanted to say to Grandma, but now there was only one. Grandma, please, please help me lessen the load on all Green by even a little bit. Please, give me the strength to do that. After praying, I slowly opened my eyes and looked for Polaris like I always do. I found it right away. I stared at it, praying once more inside my heart. Then, as they answered my prayer, Polaris twinkled softly back at me. Last night, Ukraine sensed me to punishment by Dongo. The tiny dumplings are charcoal grilled, just like they used to be. They were gently toasted and the red bean paste wasn't overly sweet. They were really yummy. Okri and I ate and ate, ate Herbie Kusa Dongo and Sasi made a Rashi Dongo until we were full. It had been so long since we did that. We started to, talking about back when I visited Grandma's grave every day, and that naturally got us talking about the past. Like back when Okri wanted to be like a fire-wielding character he liked. And he got obsessed with fingerless gloves. And back when Maishi first began making cosplays, we talked lots and lots about normal, everyday things. We talked like we used to back when Okri and I were the only two lab mems. They used because I've been so busy lately, but yesterday was the first time in a while when time passed slowly. There. I wanted to write in my diary last night before sleeping, but after getting home and taking a shower, I was so tired that I fell asleep right away. I didn't even have any nightmares. It's been so long since I slept so soundly. But when I woke up, to my surprise, it was already late afternoon. Mum laughed at me for sleeping so late. After eating a very late breakfast in place of a snack, I decided to write about yesterday's dongle punishment in my diary I forgot. That's everything. I closed my diary after finishing the entry. Feeling like I've done my work for the day, I and I, and I stretched myself out. Mm. 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 Oh, right. Before I forget, I'll send Okreen a thank you message for yesterday. I take my cell phone, I take my cell phone out of my bag. Oh, no. I, I forgot to recharge it. Bruh. When I plug in my cell phone into the charger, I receive a flood of messages. Huh? Sorry, after apologizing to Ferris on everything, I'm the worst. Sorry for bothering while you're busy, Inya. I need to talk to you about Kunya and call me right away when you see this, Nya. There are also lots of missed calls from Ferris chan. I wonder what's wrong. Did something happen with Ferris chan and Chris chan? Uh oh. The call won't go through. A bad feeling starts to come over me. What happened? Ferris! Hello. Oh, Mayushi. I was waiting to call. For you to call. Yeah. 
Sorry I'm slowly getting back to you, Vershan. I didn't notice my cell phone died. No, I'm not the one who... I'm the one who needs to be sorry right now, Nya. Did something happen with Christian? Well... Ferris got cute and mad, Nya. Huh? What happened? Since Kunyan seemed to be worried about her dad, I couldn't leave her be. I ended up, I ended up telling her this and that, yeah. She was worried about her dad? I didn't want her to have the same regrets I do, so I told her that they should try to get along. I think I pushed Kunyan a little too far, yeah. She got worked up, then she said some weird stuff and ran out, yeah. What kind of weird stuff? We'll never meet again, and you'll all forget that I was here soon anyway. I, I really don't get what she meant, yeah. Wait. Wait a minute. Could this be a version of Karisu that knows that in order for the time, in order for Mayuri to survive, she, she has to die. Is that what this is? This could be a version of Karisu that knows that she has to die in order for Mayuri to survive. That the world line has to shift so that Karisu never exists or that never survives. Christian said that? There's no way she'd say something like that without any reason. And she said you'll all forget that I was Kirsten anyway. What does she mean by you all? Does that mean people out of the Ferris Chan are going to forget about Christian's existence? And lots of people might forget about meeting someone after a long time, but why did she say soon? Does this mean that everyone's going to forget that Christian existed? Oh, you know what this is? In that case, this might be like the last day before Okabe is successful in changing to the beta world line. That might be what this is. That this might be the world line where this it we may be in the path to where Okabe is about to switch back to the beta world line. That meal. I'll never be able to see her again? That can't be tr true. I must be overthinking this. I shake my head to erase a terrible idea from my mind. But the bad feeling inside me just keeps growing. I'm right here. That's why she was acting that way. Existential dread. Christian... It was weird. She seemed totally different from the way Kyama described her. Uh, she seemed really unsettled, yeah. I sensed something a little off, but I didn't realize that Christian was so upset. If I know it's, I would have gone straight to Christian after the service day yesterday. At the very least, if I hadn't let my cell phone die, I would have noticed Christian's texts and Ferris John's calls earlier. I can't believe I ignored them and eat Dongo with Okri instead. I'm sorry, Ferris John. What if, what if what, what I said was the last straw for Kunyan? No way. Christian sent me a message asking me to let you know she's sorry. You didn't do anything wrong, Ferris chan Mayushi. I might not be able to get in touch with her right now, but Mayushi will do something to contact Christian. It would be great if you could, yeah. Is there anything I could do? Should I gather up my black clothes so we can try to uh, tell her, yeah? What? No, I don't think it's a good idea to make a big fuss. I'll try looking for on my own first. If all else fails, I might need to ask you, though, Ferris chan Got it, yeah. I'll, make, I'll, make, I'll be sure to get ready just in case you do ask, yeah. Thanks, Ferris chan I, I don't think I can leave Kunyan be, yeah. I can't but worry about her. Does it, does it have something to do with one of your past lives, like you always say? Exactly, yeah. And Papa always said I need to treasure my friendships. I'm tr I'll tr try thinking of something I can do for Kunyan, too, yeah. 
Thanks. Okay, I'll be sure to let you know if anything happens. Sounds good, yeah. <laughs> Keep calling. Does she want to answer? There you are. After a while, the phone switches to voicemail. Please be okay, Christian. She might be too... She might just be too busy to answer her phone, but... That feeling will go away, and it makes me feel uneasy. Could something have happened? There's no way she would ever forget Christian, though. Everyone's going to forget Christian soon. I can't believe that. How soon is soon? Is that why she's acting so oddly? I want to see Christian. No, I need to see her. I couldn't help myself anymore. I grab my cell phone and run out of my room. Can I just mention, that was the fastest charging phone I think I've ever seen. What was that? She plugged her phone in for like a, a minute. <laughs> and then it was already fully charged. What do you mean? Hang on. Does it actually say... It's saying fully charged here. You plugged it in for a minute and it was zero before. Oh, wait, there are more messages here. Hang on. Wait, outbox. Mayushi, how many times do I have to tell you I don't have a, I don't have a boyfriend. Just Okreen's hostage. Stop teasing me, Fubuki Chan. You big me. Is that? Wait. Say like Fubuki Chan wants to wear. Uh, Fubuki Chan wants to wear a cos. Uh, there aren't too many. What should I do? I'm too focused on the story to focus on those. I'm sorry. <laughs> I also need to take off my jacket. It's hot. I pray in my heart that I'll be able to run into her like I did yesterday. Christian isn't here. I tried calling her a few more times, but it wouldn't connect. I also mentioned Darkoon and Okreen about whether they knew where Christian was, but I only heard back from Darkoon. Darkoon says he's in the lab as usual, but he hasn't seen Christian for the past two or three days. He ain't got a hold of Okreen either. Is that just a coincidence? I'm overthinking it. This isn't the time to worry that about that. But everything in my mind feels so mixed up right now. Okreen was acting so strangely too. That's probably Mayushi's fault. Maybe Christian's acting this way because of Mayushi too. I know that I'm jumping to unrealistic conclusions here. But maybe it's a gut feeling. Whenever I get a bad feeling, I'm usually right, so I can't ignore it. Could it be? I look up at the sky. It had been sunny until a moment ago, but dark gray clouds had suddenly rolled, it, rolled in all around. As I stood and thought that it might start raining, the raindrops began to fall. I knew it. It's raining. I run for cover under a storefront overhang. The rain gets to fall harder and harder. Before long, it's pouring. Oh, why are things always like this? This is the worst. For some reason, it always rains when I need to do something important. According to Okreen, Mayushi's a rain magnet. Whenever it rains when I was Okreen, he always blames me and says, That's why I always tell you to carry a portable umbrella. Whenever I say no, it's too much trouble. Okreen always shakes his head to me and sighs deeply. But then he always ends up buying a plastic umbrella at the convenience store and covering the, both of us with it. I have a mountain of plastic umbrellas from Okreen. I usually... <laughs> Use your damn umbrellas. I feel like it's a waste to throw them away, so it, they become a sort of collection. <laughs> I guess, umbrella collection. I wonder if it's just passing shower. I hope it stops soon. 
Where's Okay and what can he be doing right now? Is Crush Chan okay? I hope they didn't get caught up in all this rain. Is Maishi a heavy burn on both of them? I murmured this to myself, then shake my head. No, that doesn't help. I'm thinking too much right now. Like I'm on super sensitivity mode right now. This happens sometimes. Usually I'm not bothered by little things, but sometimes I can't stop obsessing over and worrying about tiny details. Whenever that happens, Okreen scoffs me and says, You, worry about the little things. That's not like you at all and tries to cheer me up. If only Okreen were here beside me now. If only he'd laugh us all off telling me my Yuri, overthinking things. No way. I can't but think like this. Maybe Mayushi is really relying on Okreen too much. Okreen's kind. He's like a weird older brother. I feel so safe when I'm with him. He's so easy to be around. That's all it is. I try to murmur positivity to myself. But the more I try to calm myself down, the more uneasy I feel. That's all. The rain ended up to be just a passing shower, so it let up before long. Once the rain stopped, I resumed my search for Christian. The setting, the setting sun reflecting off the wet pavement is blinding. I squint my eyes and navigate through, through the people walking around, searching for Christian. I can't find her anywhere. I thought I'd be able to see her any time since we have cell phones. I drop my gaze to my phone and sigh. Suddenly, someone calls out to me. Oh, Daru! Mayushi! What brings you here? Oh, Tarakun! I saw you met your message. Are you still searching for Makaseishi? Yeah, I can't get a hold of her. Is it something urgent? Well, I don't know if it's urgent. I don't want Darkun to worry too, so I decided not to explain. How are you, Darkun? Are you going somewhere? Yeah, I was planning to go over to Make Queen Plus Neon Squared, then making my rounds at the internet cafes. Wow, you must be rich. Twice a year during Kanwa season, I give myself permission to do whatever I want. That's what I'm always saving up for. Wow, Darkun, are you saving up just for Kanwa? You're a model of Taku, aren't you? Oh, uh, please, you flattered me. But if you do see Christian, um, could you let me know? Okay. Thanks. See you later. Later. After parting ways with Darkun, I let out another sigh. Maybe I'll go to the lab. Christian might have gone to there after Darkun left. I decided to head that way. Once I reached the lab building, I stopped in my tracks. The lights are on. At first I thought Darakun must have forgotten to turn off the lights, but then I saw a shadow move near the window. That must be Christian. I run up the stairs two at a time. I swing over the door and run inside the lab. Christian, are you here? Ah, uh, it's Okari. My Yuri? Okari. It wasn't Christian who stood up from the sofa, but Okarine. What's wrong? Did something happen to her? Okarine's expression changed as he grabs my arm. His grip is shockingly strong. Okarine. Sorry, but you're hurting my arm. I'm sorry. Okarine returns to the census and lets go of my arms. Things feel so awkward. The shoulder of Okreen's jacket catches my eye. There's a zigzaggy pink stitch. Oh. This sucks. <laughs> this sucks. So this, so this is when it's happened. Interesting. This happens right after the staircase scene then. Thinking about now, yeah, actually that makes sense because the rain... Uh, the rain starts, and then whilst Kurisu and Okabe are inside, Kurisu puts the, uh, uses the pink thread to 
stitch up the lab coat. Huh, so that's what it is. So it seems like we are really starting to notice the effects of Carissa realizing, hey, in order for Mayuri to live, she has to die. Ugh. Damn it. My first reaction is to look away. Oh, Green, did something happen to Christian? No, uh, not necessarily. If nothing happened, you wouldn't be that worried, right? Myri. You and Christian, there's something odd with both of you. I know you told me not to ask, but I want to know. I can't. What if something terrible is happening that Mayushi doesn't know about? What if, I'm, what if I'm not just a burn on you, but Christian as well? It's not true, I swear. Okarin was never a very good liar. Hey, Okarin. What is it? Christian won't disappear, right? I want him to laugh and say I was being ridiculous. Okarin falls silent. He's bad at lying, so when he's silent, it's the same as a yes. Does that mean Christian really is going to disappear soon? It can't be. Why? There's no way. I can't believe she's going to disappear. I feel sting in my nose and my vision goes blurry. My tears fall to the carpet. I will never permit such a future to come to pass. I refuse to allow it. Okreen looks beaten and worn out. But his eyes have so much fire in them that it scares me. I'll never give up. I'll find a third way. I'll find a future that I approve of, no matter how many times I have to redo it. Will the world be damned? Okreen. His words just now. He knows about the future in a way. He and Carissa both know about the future. At the moment, there are only two choices. One choice is to simply stay in the Alpha World line. Stay in the Alpha World line, let my Yuri die and Karisu live, and then just wait for the for the dystopia that CERN will eventually create. The second option is go back to the Beta World line, let Karisu die, but my Yuri comes back to life, and then just wait for World War Three to begin. And but they're trying to find a third option. Steins Gate. Has Okreen lived through time over and over again? All to, all to change our future? Has Okreen been fighting alone for all of us? I had absolutely no idea. Why? You always... I can't bring myself to say anything more. I take Okreen's hand and put it to my cheek. It's rough against my skin as I rub it. I'm sorry, Okreen. I never realized. The tears won't stop flowing. They splash against Okreen's palm. Even when you're in so much pain, I can't tell you not to give it your all. You're already pushing yourself harder than you can take. And I can't tell you to take it easy. I don't want Christian to disappear. Okreen, are you the only person who can save Christian? <gasps> yeah. But why? Why is it just you, Okreen? It breaks my heart that I can't help him. Okreen was the one who supported Mayushi when I was in pain. I always wanted to pay that debt. I want to support Okreen when he was in pain. But Mayushi can't do anything. I wish Mayushi could go in your place, Okreen. I squeeze his hand. <laughs> uh, don't be absurd, Mayuri. There's no, like, there's no way you could do the despicable work of the one and only Yuin Kyoma. 
Oh, green smirks at me, just like always. All of this is the will of Steins Gate. There's no need for you to worry. But... Hostages should act like hostages and stay quiet. Oh, green furrows his brow even tighter. Something about the concern the states makes it impossible for me to say anything more. Mayushi doesn't want any to do anything to her oak green. I don't want to see a face like that. Mayuri. You promised, to remember? When the time comes, I'll tell you everything. You haven't forgotten that, have you? I remember, but oak green. Oh, you know, oak green's out there flying all alone. How can I just stay here and wait? I want to help Okreen. It doesn't matter how. Mayushi wants to be helpful. I want to tell him that. I forced myself to swallow those words at the very last minute. We did make a promise. So I guess I have to keep it. The words stuck in my throat like rocks, but I managed to get them out. <laughs> Okreen's hard expression softened. And I started to feel relieved. But Okreen, please, don't push yourself too hard. I know it makes no sense to tell you to try your best and not strain yourself at the same time, but... I'll be fine. But you, Mayuri, you're more... Hmm? More what? Are you all right? Are you, are you, are you okay right now? Realizing that Christian and Okreen have both asked me the same question, my mind goes blank for a second. Oh, come on, Okreen. I told Christian too, but my energy's always full of energy. I'm just fine, see? Yeah. Okreen's expression clouds over. Seems like Christian and Okreen share some secret they can't tell Mayushi. Guess I really am the one who's causing them pain. Sorry. Uh, what were you saying about Christina? Uh, did something happen to her? Well, I can't get a hold of her at all. She was acting kind of strange before, so I was worried and looking for her. Uh. Okreen looks away from me and sighs. He doesn't seem all that surprised. It's as if he suspected it. Okay. I'll search with you. Well, actually... Okay, can you let Mayushi handle Christian? You know Mayushi might not be of much help to you, but... You're already help enough. I don't know if that's true. It is, so don't say stuff like that. Green. Very well. Maybe it's better to let you handle this one. I'm sure she wouldn't exactly want to see me right now anyway. Oh, Green, did you fight with Christian? Well, maybe a little bit late in the afternoon. Oh, Green mumbles. There was a big downpour this evening. Do you guys stay dry? Well, I guess so. So both you and Christian were Akiba? Mm. I see. Conversation stops there. I thought about asking where they were in Akiba, but things are so uncomfortable that I decided not to. You two really shouldn't fight. You've got to be friends. I think fighting might be Christina and my default. That's just because you tease her too much, though. She gets so worked up over the littlest things. Come on, she grew up in America. She should be able to take a joke or two. You know, Green's Carmen's were as harsh as all ever. I was surprised at how soft his expression looked. And anyway, you're in charge of this case. You're in charge. Those simple words from Okreen gave me the energy and courage. Okay, I'm in charge. This is an important mission. Yeah. I'm leaving her to you. Okreen firmly squeezes my hands. I got it. You can count my Yushi. I squeeze his large hands back and smile my biggest smile. Okreen smiles faintly and nods. All he wants for Okreen to smile. For that, I feel like I can do anything. 
Okay then, I'll let you know when I find Chris Chan. Fine by me. I'll let you know if she returns to the lab too. Thanks. Okay, I'll see you later. I'm happier knowing I'm in charge of something that I wouldn't, wouldn't be if I couldn't do anything. I hope I can be a help to Okreen, even if it's just a little bit. With this saw in mind, I run down the stairs and out of the building. After leaving Okreen, I searched the area around the lab and made Queen Plus Down Square once more, but I couldn't find Christian. I still can't reach her by phone either. And there's no word from Darkun or Okreen, who said they would let me know if they found her. Where has Christian gone? If I can't find her after all that searching, maybe she already left Akiba. But it seemed like she was in Akiba this evening, and she's always at the lab until late, so I don't think she'd leave. Hey, Blar. Ooh, I also need to stretch, my goodness. Ooh. I took a look around me. Like that night is completely different than it is in the afternoon, with a lot less people around. Is it not time for cur your curfew? Are you ready? Are you already home? Don't push yourself too hard. My curfew isn't as strict as, as it was before, you know? My Yushi's not a little okay anymore. I'm not pushing myself. My Yushi is perfectly okay. You boop. Thanks for not worrying about me. Try not to push yourself either. Yep, babe. <sighs> so it should be a lot easier to find someone. I couldn't even catch a glimpse of Chris Chan. Akiba's not that big, so why can't I find her today? Like me and Chris Chan in the crowd yesterday was just a dream. I haven't been able to find a trace of her. What if Christian actually has disappeared? No, that can't be true. Christian won't disappear. Okay, okay, it's trying really hard too. Everything will be okay. I try to rest the negative thoughts out of my head. This isn't the time to worry. Grandma always said that people who want to meet somehow find a way to meet. I squeeze Pocky in my hands and sigh. Does that work if only one of them wants to see the other? Please. Lisa Christian wants to see Mayushi too. Since I'm in charge of the investigation, I need to work as hard as I can. Speaking of my st my stiff and tired legs, I start walking around again, continuing my search for Christian. Yeah, I can't believe I still can't find her. It's like I've been cursed or something. I can't stop myself from complaining. I walked all around Akiba over and over searching for Christian, but as hard as I tried, I couldn't find her. It's almost midnight. If I can't find her before the last train, I guess I'll have to wait until tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow she'll be answering her phone, though. I try to be positive about it. But the feeling that I can't let this wait until tomorrow won't leave me. Anyway, I need to do everything I can till then. I don't want to regret not doing something. I bury my negative feelings and hold my head up. And at that moment, my gaze is drawn toward the UPX overpass. The chestnut colored hair, the personalized uniform. She's far away, but there's no mistaking it. Christian! Christian is blankly staring down from the overpass. Hey, Christian! I wave my hands wildly and call out her name. But she doesn't notice me. She's still staring down from the overpass. She stands in place. Cars zoom un under the overpass at, at scarily fast speeds. Please. Please, Chun. It suddenly seemed to me that she might jump into the zooming cars zooming past below her. And my breath catches in my throat. In a split second, I was blindly running up the stairs, leaping up to the overpass. Christian's uh, eyes were blank. It seemed like she was looking at nothing at all. She was just vacantly staring into space, with her fingers touching her lips. It was as if she was a doll, with her soul sucked out of her. <laughs> Christian! <laughs> I run with all my might and tackle her. 
Yes. Her entangled bodies collapsed into the overpass. Ma Mayuri? M Mayuri! Christian, you can't do that! You throw away your life! I lock her body in a tight embrace. Uh, uh, what? What? What's going on? Why are you... Because you look like you're going to jump any second. I need to stop you. Huh? Uh, seriously, Mayuri, you thought I was going to commit suicide. Yeah. No, that's definitely not what was going on. I've thought about it before, but... Oh, so is Mayushi jumping to conclusions? What a relief. We're not going to skip over the fact of what you just said. We're not just going to glance over that. I hope you realize that. I refuse to glance over that. Because <laughs> that's some bullshit. <laughs> My body, which is tensed up this whole time, relaxes. You seemed down and I couldn't get a hold of you, so I was really worried. Ah, I'm sorry about that. I, I was too overwhelmed to check my phone even once. That's okay. I'm just happy I managed to find you. Wait, Mayuri. Were you looking for me this whole time? Mm -hmm. Then you were out all day, but it's practically midnight. Mm -hmm. I was worried about you, Christian. Maybe I went a little overboard. Mayuri. You're a cute girl, so you shouldn't be walking around so late at night. You could have been caught by some scary people or ended up in some sort of other sort of danger. Shouldn't you listen to your own advice, Christian? I'm uh, unlike you, Mayuri. I I'm not cute at all, so it's fine. No way, that's not true. Mayuri. Christian smiles weakly and gently pats me on the back. Thank you for looking for me this whole time. It was nothing. We're friends, so it's only natural. It's natural for you, Mayuri. Until now, nobody's ever come looking for me. To me, it's anything that but natural. Christian. I always thought that nobody would ever care what happened to me. Even my father ignored me. Mayushi would never or not care about what happened to you, Christian. And everyone else feels the same way. Ferris, John, Ocarine, and everyone else in the lab. When I said that, when I said that, Christian looked into the distance grimly. She stayed silent for a while and then let out a troubled sigh. Mayuri, you're too good. I have no right to be talking to you right now. She bites her lip and casts her eyes downward. Don't say that. Once more, I tightly embrace Christian's slender body. It's okay. We'll always be friends. Don't worry. A few bumps won't change that. Mayuri. She hesitantly raised her eyes to look at me, then shakes her head. But what if it's more than just a few bumps? Even if it is, that's fine. You can't make friends and without being prepared for stuff like that. Prepared, huh? I'd rather hear the harsh truth than a nice lie. It's a lot better than not knowing anything at all. Remembering Okreen's expression, I nod to Christian. I see. You're strong, Mayuri. Christian Chris convinces, crosses her arms and mumbles to herself as, as if she's convincing herself of something. The two of them are keeping a secret from Mayushi. Okreen didn't tell me, but Christian might. Christian, do you remember our promise to have a sleepover together? Yeah, of course. The hotel inn isn't luxurious or anything, but if that's fine with you, you're welcome anytime. It doesn't have to be fancy or anything, as long as we can have a nice long talk. Well, would it be okay if we did our sleepover tonight? I mean, it's not any, if it's not any trouble. Sure. After all, if we don't do it tonight, there might not be a next time. After thinking for a while, Christian nodded. Yeah. Okay by me. Thank you. If anything, I think that's my line. All by an apology. Hmm? Don't worry about it. 
Christian sits up and then supports and supports my body so we can get back up together. Tomorrow. I have some plans to attend to, so I need to leave early. We won't have a lot of time, but is yes, that still okay? Yeah, that's totally fine. Well, consider yourself invited. There we go. Promise delivered upon. Gotta keep my keep to my word, right? I'm so happy. Thank you. I got I've got a message to Okri in the air to let them know I found Christian. It's just like that to do that. I received a message of my own. Sorry for contacting you so late. I'm sure I'm sure you're home by now, but just in case we found Christina, she's okay. You can spin the search mission. Oh, I thought Mayushi was the first to find you, but I guess Okreen found you first. That match is, fr is from Okabe. Yep, Christian, did you stop by the lab before coming here? Did you see Okreen? I... Yeah. I see. I wonder why Okreen didn't message me earlier. He told me he would as soon as he saw you. Oh. Well... She looks away from me and blinks uncomfortably. Something might have happened between her and Okreen. It doesn't look like she wants me to ask. An awkward silence. Well, maybe I received the message later. Maybe Okreen forgot until now. You know, he's not good with phones and stuff. It's not... Well, maybe. Reach down starts trying to say something, but seems to decide against it. Well then, Christian, shall we get going? Seeing her object to try to blow away this awkward feeling in the air, I took Christian's arm and pulled her along with me. Room! I really let my dad know that I was he late tonight, but I called him again to ask if I could stay at Christian's hotel since I missed the last train. He said it was okay. Maybe it's because I called at the last minute, but dad started freaking out about my issue becoming some sort of delinquent. When I put Christian on the phone, she explained the situation and convinced them. We found Cunha, and thank goodness I'm still in the middle of locating, looking up her dad's deeds. I'm working on solving that little mystery. What do you mean? I'm really curious. You must be a detective, Ferris John. Yippee! Usually, he doesn't have any promised sleep hours if I call in advance, so I was surprised at how panicky he sound. Once I got permission to stay over at Christian's, we went to the convenience store to get some snacks before going to a hotel. <laughs> We're finally having our sleepover. Thanks for convincing Dad. He might not have said yes if I had explained it all on my own. I'm used to winning debates. It, I know it's not really like a cute thing to do, but it's kind of become a habit of mine. But I don't always, but I don't know what what got at that so worked up. He's always okay with me saying it's the lab when it gets late, so why was he asking so odd today? To be fair, Myri, all you told him was, since it's late, I'm going to stay at a hotel tonight. Of course he's getting the wrong idea. Huh? I don't see a difference in staying at a hotel versus a lab. Well, it depends on the hotel. He must have thought you were staying at the wrong type. There are right and wrong types of hotels? Oh, poor Myri. Well, sure there are. Don't worry, but don't worry. The hotel I'm staying at is just fine. Uh, nothing shady about it. Watch it would make it shady. Ahem. Why don't we just leave it at that? Right, all that really matters is that we got it sorted out. Yeah, it's all thanks to your persuasion skills. I was impressed just listening to you talk. <laughs> They're nothing to be impressed about. You're impressive too, Mayuri. Your dad, lo your dad loves you so much. You think so? If he didn't, he wouldn't be so worried. This is a big worry work. My little homie Kyle. That, that sums up Ferris up perfectly, Nyan. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> you do you, Ferris. You should be grateful that he worries at all. Christian smiles weakly, then takes out two hotel glasses. She, that, she checks the mini fringe in the cupboard. I should have kept some nicer snacks, Rana. Sorry I can't treat you too much tonight. Well, I did kind of invite myself over at the last minute. Don't worry about it. Normally, I, I only have cup noodles and suck. That idiot it calls me Celeb7, but there's nothing celebrity about the way I live. 
We want lots on our way here, so we should be just fine. Well, you did come all this way to visit the hotel, so do you want so do you want room service? No, it's okay. Maybe she'll be happy as long as we can talk lots tonight. <laughs> I guess that's the point of a sleepover. Yeah, that's right. Well, which flavor cup noodles do you prefer? Se seafood or curry? I have curry. Okay. No. Are you? Are you trying to pick up a piece of the pizza with a fork? Oh well. <gasps> Christian boils some water and adds it to each cup, then hands one over to Mayushi. Oh, you're so cute. While she does this, I open up the bags of chow on chicken and other snacks, laying them up on the floor. <laughs> there, there are those freaking chicken on the bottom. There, there's the chicken with the uh, the container with the eyes that we saw in the first uh, chapter of this game, with Okabe being the alpaca man. <laughs> That he put laxatives in. <laughs> okay, here's our first ever sleepover. Over. <laughs> Cheers. We, we raise our glasses, to Dr. P, and we drink them down the flash. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> what? Wait, I want to hear the. Wait, why did you? Why were you so aggressive? Not here, you're acting like an old man. <laughs> why is it so aggressive? I got a grunt like I, I've got a grunt. I live for stuff or something like that, right? That's what my dad says. Oh my, Yuri. Kristen laughs as she slurps her cut cup noodles with a fork. It still looks like she's trying to aim for the pizza with her fork. <laughs> I know that that's probably not what the case here, but it's still just kind of funny. It's you oofed way off my shores to finally see her smile. <sighs> Somehow, I feel like this tastes even better than usual. Right? Well, we were hungry. I just now realized my cell check my cell phone. Mari, were you really trying to get a hold of me since late this afternoon? I'm so sorry, I didn't realize. No problem. All's all that ends all right. And if I weren't looking for you, we wouldn't have been able to have the sleepover. True. In the end, I think everything happens at the times it's meant to happen. Fatalism, huh? Fatalism? The belief that all things that occur in the future have been predetermined by some kind of greater being. This word is particularly popular in Shinobio circles. Ow. 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 Knowing all the shit that Kreese and Okali have to deal with. <laughs> this hurts. If something bad happens, it might make us suppressed at the time, but if we look back on it later, lots of good things might, might come out of it. I personally don't agree with fatalism. I don't believe that the future is determined. It's our disease. If the future is predetermined and unchangeable, that would, re that would re repudiate science itself. Bro. <laughs> wow, this this turned depressing. Look at Karisu's sad expression. That is the most just... I, I feel like I just need that womp sound effect. Womp. Christian stops her... Stop eating your cup noodles and continue speaking half to herself. Science has changed the world. It's changed the future. The developments of the 20th century were particularly remarkable as they granted many of mankind's dreams and desires. The phone wave was li has limitless possibilities. I don't want to repudiate its potential. But I've been thinking lately. What the future that I thought I'd see for myself was actually predetermined? I don't want to accept that. What if in the end, regardless of how much I try to change the future, everything converges at the same end point? That's difficult. It is, isn't it? A very difficult plot problem. Only a saint would be able to accept the fact that everything is fated, and I'm no saint. Hmm. Normal people can't help but want to choose the future where their loved ones are happy. I, I get that, but... Christian seems unable to find her next words and falls silent. 
Christian? <laughs> it looked as if her eyes were tearing up, so I panicked and shoved a piece of chowder and chicken into her mouth. <laughs> it's goofy Mayuri. <laughs> it feels only tastes half as good as if we eat while talking about bad stuff. <laughs> You're right. And there's no way for us to find out the answer to this question either. Besides, I don't really want to debate with you, Mayuri. So, what are we supposed to talk about sleepovers? I never really had the chance to, chance to have one. Well, it's a girl sleepover, so we should have some girl talk, don't you think? <laughs> girl talk? Uh, what, what is that? He's talking about things we usually don't talk about. We get to know each other better and become better friends. <laughs> there is something about Mayuri's look that feels so smug in a way. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> Things we don't usually talk about. Sometimes I, when I have sleepovers with Fubuki chan and my other friends, we talk about shocking stuff like what unusual ships we secretly like. It's really fun. Reverse romantic pairing characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see. You don't need to think too much about it. Whether we have a problem or want to talk about crush, Maishi's ready for anything, Christian. I clap my hands once and then stretch my arms out towards her. Uh, this is all so sudden. Um, she crosses her arms and seems to get lost in thought again. My problems. Right. I don't think revealing your weaknesses to someone is such a great idea, though. Really? For Maishi, talking to someone can sometimes help solve the problem. Well, I guess that makes some sense. I think it's just that, until now, I've been surrounded by people I can't show any weakness in front of. Including my parents. Christian. But you're different, Mayuri. <laughs> it sounds embarrassing when you put it that way. Maybe you're right. You seem to get along with your father, Mayuri, so maybe listening to your advice might help. Are you having a problem with your dad? Well, yes. I mean, among many other things. Where do I even begin? One problem at a time is just fine. Parishan has already told me a little bit about your dad. She's really worried about you, too. Oh. She is. I can't believe I let my anger out on her like that. It's not a terrible thing to do. She says she can't leave you be, Christian. Does she? Her son really is a good person. Yeah, her son's a great person. She's worried that she actually got you angry, too. It wasn't her. She didn't do anything wrong. My father hates me, but her son told me that I shouldn't leave it at that. That I should try to mend our relationship. So, I phoned my father and tried to do so. Of course, he rejected my attempts right away. Oh, hold on. Isn't Girl Talk supposed to be more, you know, positive and not this serious? No, it's fine. There is anything goes, remember? All right. It's just, this sort of thing embarrasses me a bit. It gets me nervous. It's going to take some time getting used to. Do you think you can keep going? Well, sure. After the call, I got flustered and ran out, but now I really regret doing that. Christian, you love your dad, don't you? I, I hate that man. If that were true, you wouldn't have been shocked when he rejected you, right? I... Even if you can't get your feelings across right now, if you keep showing him you love him, slowly but surely, I think he'll come to understand. You can send him letters or texts or whatever. It'll end, it'll end the same way it always does. He'll just reject me. Why don't you try showing him anyway? That's impossible. I, I don't have the time anymore. I don't have the time. Those words take me by surprise. I'm sorry, Myri. I, I know it's unlike me to act like th this way, but it's just out of my control. No, it's okay to be frustrated. Don't worry about it. Something really must be wrong with me if I'm taking my anger on you. 
There's just been so much going on lately, and uh, I think I'm at my limit. Brushing your bangs out of her face, Christian sighs deeply. I thought my brain had better specs, but nope. I'm over capacity, and I'm just so ashamed of myself that I'm it's getting the better of me. I, if only people's souls had some perfect answer like mathematical equations. All these illogical emotions are running loose in me and nothing makes any sense. These stupid thoughts are just racing through my brain. I just wish I could just perform a lobotomy on myself. Um, Ayushi doesn't really understand what you're saying about specs and the lobo somethings. Are you saying that your head's jumbled up with worries and problems, Christian? Basically. Mayushi feels the same sometimes. You're not alone, Christian. It happens to everyone. But, Mayuri, unlike me, you're always smiling. Everyone loves you. It seems like you'd never hate yourself. No, that's not true at all. For Mayushi, it happens when I can't help the people who are important to me. Or when I feel like I'm a burden on them. People who are important to you, huh? Yep. And by that, you mean him, don't you? It's not just Okreen. You're important to me too, Christian. Mayuri. If I'm going to ask, now's the time. It's her when I take a deep breath and ask. Um, hey. Is Mayushi a heavy burden for you too? Where'd that come from? Of course you're not a burden. Are you sure? I thought maybe I was causing you and Okreen some sort of problem. That's my biggest worry right now. Did he say something to you? No, Okreen didn't tell me anything, but I thought about it a lot and that was my conclusion. I see. I'm guessing you know what Okreen's concerned about right now, huh, Christian? Well, I wonder if Okreen won't tell Mayushi because I'm useless to him. No, that's absolutely not true. It's because he trusts you more than anyone else, Mayuri. He doesn't want to hurt you. He wants to protect you. Christian? Mayuri, make no mistake of that. Or else all his, of his efforts will go to waste. I mean, not that I care if his efforts go to waste or not, since he's basically the king of idiots. He's so, so stupid, it drives me nuts. The words are sharp, but at the same time, they're also very kind. Just like Okreen. Christian, you and Okreen are a lot alike. Uh, 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 no, wait, no, wait, no, wait. Uh, Maya, listen carefully. You're telling me that I'm basically the same as that ignorant idiot. Uh, that really hurts, you know? I really think you are alike. You see each other well, you know? Are you kidding me? Me and him. Never, never, ever. Impossible. Really? Oh, whatever. That... Jimmy Bio... In spite of her words, Christian's cheeks flush red. Yeah, she's not a very good liar either. Uh, Myra, you're much more suited to... I mean, you've known each other for so long, and... Okreen is... Okreen is like an older brother to Mayushi. That's... That's all it is, so... With each word, it becomes harder and harder to keep speaking. Noticing Mayushi's expression, Christian lightly pulled on my cheek. Mayuri, it's obvious that you're straying yourself. Carl <laughs> 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 talk is about sharing some things we don't usually talk about, right? So you can be honest, and I... I'll be honest, too. Okay... We look each other in the eye and nod. Mayuri, you like Okabe, don't you? Can't wrap up Chris Christian's intense gaze. Yeah. But I know that Okreen likes you, Christian. Uh, why would you say that? I can see it. Since Mayushi's Okreen's hostage, I've always seen Okreen up close. I can tell. Okay, it's your turn. Christian, be honest. You like Okreen? I, 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 I... Hmm? I hate that idiot. But 
Today, he said something unnecessary, and it's confusing me. That's all. Christian put her hands into her mouth and shakes her head. I swear. Sorry. It's just, things are so confusing. I, I must sound totally incoherent right now. No, it's okay. I understand. Keep going. Okay. All right. All right. It's just because, just because it's you, I'll be honest. She takes several deep breaths before laying out her breath and saying, The thing is, Okabe confessed to me earlier. For a second, my mind goes blank. I open my mouth to try to say something, but I'm lost for words. After a while, when I could finally manage to say something, I was surprised at how dumb I sounded. Oh, really? This is a lot like when Grandma died. I don't feel any bitterness or sadness at all. But it feels like there's a gaping hole in my heart. But that must have been some mistake. He's going after the wrong person. How can he be so dumb? Christian was angry for Mayushi. But Okreen didn't make a mistake at all. I can tell. That's not true, Christian. But Mayuri, you're more important to him than anyone else. That's why, even if he wears himself out, he never gave up on saving you. And he found a way to do it, Mayuri, but... Okreen is going to save me. Yuchan realizes she said too much and clamps her mouth shut. Jeez, th th there really must be something wrong with me right now. I I'm sorry, Mayuri. I, I, I can't say anything more. No, tell me. But, please, Christian, my Yushi wants to know about everything. Everything you're trying to keep away from me. I look into her eyes and plead. But... Oh, Kabe, and I don't want to hurt you. And more than that, I don't want you to go through the same thing I did. I don't care if it hurts. Just tell me, please. If you are, if you and Okreen are hurting, I don't want to be unhurt. It's not fair. I want to be the same as you, whether you're happy or sad. Mayuri. Christian clenches her fist and suddenly stares at the floor. Is she actually going to get to hear her own death? All I can do is look at her and pray. After some time, she raises her head and looks at me. Mayuri. Mayuri. Are you sure you won't regret this? I'm sure. It's okay. I'm ready for anything. Yeah. So you're the same as me, then? Mm-hmm. In that case, I should tell you. Just like Okabe told me, it's not fair to stay quiet. Besides, there's no point hiding it now. Okay, I'll tell you. Thank you, Christian. Christian, Christian stares into my eyes. I can feel the tension. Everything falls silent. Because of the changing world lines, if things continue as they are, Mayuri, you're going to die. Huh? In order to find a way to avoid your death, Okabe's been repeatedly performing time leaps. I warned him that they were still unstable and dangerous, but he's done everything, anything and everything to find a future where you can be saved. No way. I remember the nightmares I've been having lately and gasp. I've been having nightmares lately and... In each one, I've been about to die, but every time, Okreen would come and try to save me. But in the end, Mayushi dies anyway. Could be that those weren't really dreams? I can't completely rule that out. Every time Okabe does a time leap, the past is overwritten. The previous past could remain with you as dreams. Oh. So they weren't dreams after all. Okabe theorized that by getting rid of all the emails we sent, the original reason we changed world lines, we could return to our original world line. That's why he's been doing the time leaps. I think that theory is correct, and there's only one D-mail to get rid of now. We're one move from checkmate. I don't fully understand what Christian's saying, but I think hard. Um, so Okreen is trying to get back to the world line before D-mails existed in order to save Mayushi, and thanks to him, we're almost back to normal? Yes, but then Okabe realized something. Then the original world line, I died two weeks ago. Huh? For a moment, I couldn't understand what she said. No, that's not right. 
I think I didn't want to understand. I can't believe that. I, I don't want to believe that. That has to be a mistake. Valkyrie wore himself out trying to get back to the original world line. In the original world line, Christian is already dead. That's horrible. Too horrible. Mayuri, do you remember Okabe rambling about me getting killed at Radicon? I remember, but I thought it was Okreen just making things up like always. I did too. But it wasn't. It was likely a real event in the original world line. In the original world line, on that day, on July 28th, I died. So if we go back to the original world line, what happens to you? Chris Chan uh, crisses her arms and laughs bitterly. <laughs> it's probably impossible for a dead person to come back. I never thought about the afterlife or anything, but I'll probably disappear from the world. Ugh. I can't stop shaking. I said I was prepared for the truth, but I can't accept that. Now you're going to disappear. There must be... I'm sure there's another way. Christian, Christian shakes her head quietly as if to cut me off. I racked my brain for every possible option, but they all lead to the same place. If we don't return to the original world line, you die. If we do return it, I die. No matter what. That's right. Okabe des tried desperately to find a way to save both of us, pushing himself to time through time and time again and again. But all to no avail. That can't be. Returning to the original world line is one thing, but trying to find a different world line is... It's reckless. The world isn't that convenient. At this rate, Okabe's going to destroy himself. Honestly, he's already halfway there. It only makes sense. He's seen someone important to him die over and over again. How can we tell him to stay normal? It's honestly surprising that he hasn't gone mad already. I had no idea that Okreen was so close to his breaking point. Both Okreen and Chris Chun. I had no idea you know, they suffered so much because of me. I felt so sorry that I didn't even have the words to begin to express it. This might sound cruel, but continuing with the time leaps, even though we already ha have the answer, is nothing more than escapism. And if the fatalism you believe in is true, Mayuri, the world line where I'm dead is the real and fated one. So I convinced Sokabe that he should save you, Mayuri. He won't listen at first, but in the end, he agreed. Watching her speak with such a detached tone made me feel as if she might disappear at any moment. I rushed toward Christian and wrapped her and wrapped her in a tight embrace. No, you can't. You can't. Mayuri. I'm sorry, Christian. Mayushi. Mayushi didn't know anything. You know I said something horrible to you. A world where you have to die. I don't want that fate. I don't want it. But that's the right one, Mayuri. Please, try to understand. She pats Mayushi's head softly as if calming down a child. I don't care if it's right or not. I don't want a future without you, Chris Chun. I do whatever it takes to change it. Both you and Okreen had suffered so much. But Mayushi, I had no idea. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Why are you the one apologizing? I'm the one who kept this from you. I don't want to betray you. I don't want you hating me. I want you to stay smiling, Mayuri. That's why I... Christian, you've never betrayed Mayushi. I always had a day like this might come. What are you? You supported Okrim when he was at his worst, right? I never... I didn't intend to do that, but he's just so dumb. I couldn't leave him to suffer alone. Of course, you would fall in love with someone who helped you at your worst. My issue was the same. When I spoke those words, I finally realized just how much I really liked Okreen. But I'm not the one who can make Okreen happy. It's you, Chris Chan. So don't worry about Mayushi. Just take good care of Okreen. 
I bow my head and think to myself. I'm acting like Okreen's mother or something. Don't ask that of me. I'll only let you down. I've already decided to return to America, so I can't take care of him or... Huh? Uh, really? Uh, when? I snap my head up to see her looking into the distance with a pained expression. Uh, tomorrow. Well, no, I guess it, it's today now. I don't know the exact time, but I'm planning to leave Japan. Why was was that your plan for today? So soon. Why? I thought, I thought it out, and relatively speaking, and that's the best option. Does Okreen know about this? He does. And... This is the conclusion Okabe and I came to. I don't intend to change my mind. Okabe's done as much as he can. He's done so much. He's also promised never to forget me. For me, that's enough. So please, you have to understand, Mayuri. My tears start to blur my view of her pained smile. No way. I don't want to understand. Mayuji doesn't... Mayuji doesn't want to live if you have to pay the price. I feel the same. We exchange glares. Neither of us willing to give in to the other. I'm astounded by the way Christian's eyes burn with determination. Her will seems unchangeable. But Mayuji has a trump card. It's one that I'd rather not use. But there's no other way I'll have to. Slowly and quietly, I make up my mind. Um, Christian, do you believe in fate of relationships? Fate of relationships? Mm hmm. If you have a fate relationship with someone, no matter what happens, no matter what world you're in, you're somehow sure of me. That's what Maishi's grandma said. I see. There's absolutely no scientific merit to that, but right now, I'd like to believe that. Mayushi wants to believe it, too. If two people want to meet, something will draw them together. As long as they're alive, they can meet again. I say this to convince myself. Then I smile at Christian. So I won't give up yet. Because I haven't done anything yet. I don't want to give up before I try something. I regret too much if I did. Mayuri, I'm grateful for the way you feel, but we have an answer. Even Okabe, who can perceive the changes in world lines, couldn't do anything. It's impossible for the two of us. I thought of every possibility, and there's nothing we can do. We're out of luck. We can't just will a miracle into being. Christian. I mean, Mayushi's final trump card isn't a trump card at all. Maybe it's useless. But still, I don't want to give up before I try. My feelings won't change. It might be impossible. It might be useless, but I need to try. Mary, did you just say something? No, it's nothing. Oh. Things suddenly feel awkward between us, and I have no idea what to say. Hey, let's stop with the heavy stuff. Right now, every minute and second we have is precious. I, I want to treasure them. Yeah. I don't know when Okabe plans to return to, to the original world line, but... I'm glad I was able to keep my promise to you. Thank you, Christian. No, thank you. What should we talk about? Let's see. Maybe a sword will make us laugh really hard. Well, maybe I'll share one of Mayushi's best ones. A thrilling and embarrassing Okreen legend. What? What sort of dirt do you have on him? Tell me. It was back when Okreen was in his second year of junior high. Yes, yes? Christian leads forward, eyes sparkling. I want to see more and more of her smiles. So I dig up my funniest memories and start telling her. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? Okabe's junior boat was even worse back in junior high then. I didn't know that was even possible. <laughs> it's true. There was a time when he came to school with his right hand wrapped in bandages and he drew a weird symbol on. He wasn't her or anything, so I thought it was super odd. Oh, don't tell me. I may said something like, The seal on my right hand cried out in pain. Yeah, exactly. And then... You're talking like this. When we're talking like this, it feels like the clock isn't counting down the time until Christian disappears. 
but it is. I feel really impatient. Like I need to do something, but I can't do anything until the morning. So right now, I'm just going to keep talking. Because I want to grant Christian's wish to treasure every minute, each second. After laughing and talk with Christian all night, we said our goodbyes because she needed to pack for a trip. We promised to keep in touch even when she returned to America. Leaving the hotel in Ochano Mizu, I returned to Akiba and went to the lab. I don't know when she'll disappear. I can't help but quicken my pace. I look at the time. It's right before 10 o'clock. Just a little longer. Wait for me, Christian. No longer able to contain myself, I start running. I've arrived in front of the lab. I make sure that the bronze tube workshop is open before I look up to the lab. Right then, I notice the figure on the roof. A familiar white lab coat ruffles, flutters in the wind. Okarin. Okarin is gazing at the sky, probably thinking about something. He hasn't noticed my Yushi yet. Okarin. I'll give him my all, too. I climb upstairs, making sure Okarin doesn't notice. The door is unlocked. I slide inside the lab. The empty lab was unusually quiet. The rays of the morning sun were softly shining in the room. Oh god, is she gonna do something? Oh no, Myri, what are you doing? Myri, what are you doing? I think back to when Okarin and Mayushi were the only lab mems. Once during a nighttime typhoon, the lab completely lost its power. But by the next morning, the typhoon had passed and everything was really peaceful. Like right now. But I remember feeling a little disappointed. I feel like there was no point in being so scared the night before. Okarin made me feel better that time, too. The sound of the wind and rain was so overwhelming that I was terrified the old building might collapse at any second. And just as always, Okarin would put on his dramatic voice to make me feel better. I think he said something like, This must be an act of sabotage by the organization, but I, healing Kyoma, refuse to be phased. <laughs> How nostalgic. All stuff about the organization and sabotage was made by Okarin. Just kids making things up. It was so much fun. I'd never thought it could be real. My nightmares each night weren't really nightmares. They were like fragments of memories of Okarin fighting to save Mayushi. And when I remembered a scene when I was surrounded by scary people with guns, I feel a piercing pain in my head. I needed to change things. Like Christian said, it might be impossible to make a miracle happen. But it's better than not doing anything and regretting it later. What are you doing? I stumbled towards the development room in the back. The computer in there was turned on. I just found dark and you taught me the method. It's a little difficult, but it's okay. It'll be alright. I think. Punch in my UC cell phone number and set the time for last afternoon after I noticed that my phone was dead and recharged it. Then with trembling hands, I set the headgear on my head. I'm scared. Christian said the time these could be dangerous, but I have no idea what's going to happen. Oh, Green. You've done a lot of scary things for Mayushi, haven't you? I want to cry, but this isn't a time for tears. I'm sorry, oh, Green. All I have to do is turn the machine on and call the phone wave. I take slow, deep breaths. It's okay. Nothing to be scared of. I'm not afraid. I convince myself and put my thumb up, thumb on the cell phone, cell call button of the phone. Then... Is someone there? With the sound of the door slamming open, I hear Okreen's sharp voice pierce the lab. Okreen! Mayuri! Seeing Okreen running straight for me, I hurry to turn on the machine. Next moment, a blue white white light flashes. The bright light shines brighter and brighter, and I feel the ground shaking. My head hurt. I feel like it's going to break. I can't stand up straight anymore, and I hunch over. Myri, what are you doing? I'm sorry, Okreen. My she can't give up. I pushed the call button. 
My vision violently distorts. The pain and nausea is so bad that it feels like my brain is being cut up into pieces. Stop! Ukraine's horrified face closes in on me. Everything moves in slow motion. Across my wrist with an unbelievably strong grip. Ukraine tries to rip the headgear off my head with all his might. Struggling, I desperately try to keep it on. No, stop! Please, let Mayushi go! I shout. The world cracks, and the crack spreads out all around. Everything around me explodes into dust. Uh. Oh dear. The inside my head, inside my head, scrambled. No, it's not just the inside of my head. My vision and everything else is all scrambled too. It feels awful. My head really hurts, and my ears are ringing. I cover my mouth and crush down, holding my head. It feels like someone's sticking a fork into my brain. I want to escape from this overwhelming sharp pain, but there's no way to stop it. But between the pain, there's a faint feeling of pleasure mixed in, and I want to cling to that. Bit by bit, the pain subsides. I hear a phone ringing somewhere. Where? Whose is it? Afraid, I open my eyes, and the familiar side of my room jumps out at me. That's weird. I could have sworn I was in the lab, so why am I here? There's a cell phone on the floor. I slowly pick the phone up and answer it. Hello? Is the signal bad there, Nya? The call got disconnected. Um, Ferris chan, what's going on? What was I doing? Mayushi, is something wrong, yeah? Well, Mayushi doesn't really understand. Was I just on the phone with you, Ferris chan? That's right, Nya. We were talking about Kunyan. Kunyan. But you got on our call while, while we were talking, so you put our, our call on hold and answered that one, yeah. Oh, okay. My memories aren't clear. I made Kunyan mad. That's what we were talking about, yeah. No, it's wrong. Christian sent me a message asking me to let you know she's worried. She's sorry. I guess strange feeling like I said the same thing over and over. Why? There shouldn't be anything strange about it, but I feel like something's off. But... I can't get in touch with her right now, but I'll do something. To contact her. I can't contact her. That's strange. I should have already contacted her. No, that's wrong. I tried calling her, but Christian wouldn't answer her phone. I'm worried about her. No, Christian's fine. <sighs> Which is it? Back of my head starts throbbing and the pain makes me feel sick. Mayushi, what's wrong? What's wrong? Are you okay, Nya? Yeah, it's nothing. I just have a little headache. So sorry. Don't push yourself too hard, Nya. You might still be tired out from Kamima. Yeah, probably. Anyway, I'll try thinking about things I can do for Kunyan. Thanks. Uh, see you later. So now Mayushi has joined in and as the characters that that time traveled. You're being weird, Mayushi. Hang up the phone and absentmindedly stare into space. I couldn't get a hold of Christian. I looked all over Akiba and found her on the overpass. You knew it. Something strange. I'm supposed to go and look for Christian now. Why do I think Mayushi already found her? Is this what people call deja vu? Our premonition. Something's weird. 
What's going on? And when I tilt my head in confusion, the light like bursts inside my head. Pain I thought I'd gone away comes rushing back. Oh, an even more intense pain pierces through my brain. Along with the unpleasant feeling that the inside of my head is being stirred around, events that shouldn't have happened yet come flying into my mind. Inside my head filled with all sorts of memories and feelings. Feels like it's about to explode. The reason why Maishi is such a burden on Christian no cream. The painful future that Christian told me about. Coming back into the past with the timely apes to try and change that future. I remember it all. This is a time leap. I had it finally subsides and I take a deep breath. I didn't know time leaps were such painful, agonizing things. Oh, Green suffered this pain countless times. For Mayushi. Imagining the pain he went through makes me want to cry. I definitely need to end this. I wipe my tears and raise my head. And there's only one way I can. Even if I don't know if it'll go well or not. I know she needs to do it. I take my dairy and blue up up off my desk and put them in my bag and nod. Last dark for help. Oh dear. My Yuri's plan. Hello? Hello, Darkin. It's my Mayushi. What are you doing right now? Just goofing off in the lab, but I was torn between whether to go to the net cafe or go see Fairstone after that. Line up to both. Oh, I think it's the same thing. Alright, better strike both the iron side. I'll head out right now. Right now? You seem pretty energetic today, Dark Coon. Of course, to tell you the truth, I snagged a high attack the fighting butler to Jinji at Kamimon. It was godlike. Got me real fired up. I feel like spending the night at the Net Cafe and marathon through, through an entire original manga. Um, does that mean you'll be in Akiba all day today? Hell yeah. And then I have a little request. So is it okay? Uh, does, that, does, that, does this have something to do with what you mentioned a little while back? Yeah, that's right. Today I'm at around 9 at night. Can you make it so I can send a D-mail? A D-mail? Why? There's an important D-mail I need to send no matter what. And you said you wanted me to keep it a secret from Ocarine, right? Yeah. Is that no good? I think it's a strange request myself. I wouldn't be surprised if he was suspicious. What if he starts questioning me about it? I've never been very good at telling lies, so I'm not sure I'd be able to convince him. Got it. I'll make preparations. What? Hmm? Why are you so shocked? Because, um, I thought you would ask for a reason why I want to send it, or what it was about. I'm a little surprised. Do you want, do you want me to ask? No. Then I won't. I see. Thanks, Darkoon. Dara being a bro right now. Thank you, man. Okay, I'll have Sam on standby from 10 minutes before 9. Thank you. And I'll see you later. I'm really grateful to have a friend who trusts me. I seriously think this is this is the hang up the phone. All that's left is for my, is for my usually to get ready. I saw my to use both my hands to psych myself up. What is my Yuri go going to do? I'll probably get home late today, but I already told Mom not to worry because we're all holding a farewell party for Christian at the lab. That part is a lie. Every time I tell a lie, I get this overwhelming urge to say sorry, so I really don't like doing it. But there are times when you have to lie, no matter what. I tell myself oh, that now is one of those times and to try like, to quiet my apologetic feelings. Perhaps because there's nobody in the lab. The ticking of the clock seems really loud. In my hands, future gadget number one, the Pitts something gun. The name Ocarine gave it is too difficult, so I can't remember it no matter how many times I hear it. Why does he always choose like, such complicated names? I get that he thinks they're cool, but they're too much trouble to remember. Can I just call it Pitchon? I hope Pitchon by the side of the door and lie and wait for Ocarine. Here's some of his of sluggish, dragging footsteps. I instantly know they're Ocarines. My heart starts racing and my grip around Pitchon gets sweaty. When the door opens, I press pitch on, pitch on against Ocarines and say line I've been practiced over and over. Oh! 
Okari. Put your hands up. I agree with Okreen. <laughs> that is a glorious expression from Okreen, and uh, <laughs> Mayuri's got a gun. I want to say as cool as I could, but I was so nervous I ended up stuttering. Mayuri. Mayuri. Okreen raises an eyebrow and looks at me like, "What are you doing?" I'm really embarrassed and start to feel disheartened, but I can't afford to mess up right now. I read pitch on again, sharply glare at Okri and say it again. Okari! Put your hands up! My hands? But why? Okri looks at the palms of his hands and casually cocks his head. He's not nervous at all. Just do it, Okri. Put your hands up like you're giving a cheer. Like, okay, Banzai! Like this? Banzai. Banzai. <laughs> Okreen raises his hands like it's really annoying. <sighs> For a while, we look each other in the eyes without moving. As always, he doesn't look nervous at all. It seems to be more tense than it is. It's weird. Where did I go wrong? I don't think Kwanzai, Banzai is quite the right move I'm going for. You're a little late on the uptake there. So, what do I need to do next? I don't have time to play around right now. Sorry, Queen, but you're going to be Mayushi's hostage now. What? I'm your hostage? The hostage of a hostage? What is the meaning of this? Mayushi can't see your hostage forever, Okreen. Try seeing it with an exaggerated form. It's like Okreen always does. I realize that if you say something like it's a joke, you, you can say things that you normally wouldn't be able to say. It reminds me, Fubuki and the Ars told me something like that before. Oh god, <laughs> Mayuri's becoming Okabe. <laughs> When you cosplay, you become someone different. It's not becomes possible to do things you normally can't. Maybe this is similar? This must be how Okreen feels. Mayuri, what's wrong? You aren't acting like yourself. Why are you suddenly doing this? Um, it's not sun. I've been thinking about this for a long time. I was I was holding, but I was always holding back. Anyway, don't ask questions and be my issues out. Just for a little while, please, Okreen. Okreen shrugs his chin and gives me a look of doubt. His expression suddenly softens into a sm sad smile. Mayuri, you need to say Mayuri. that in a more commanding way or it won't sound right. Oh, I guess. Now let me try it again. I take a deep breath, put some strength in my belly, and try saying it in a more commanding way. Okreen, you cut my Yushi's hostage. It still doesn't sound quite right. The Okreen plays along for me. Hmm. Oh, such rebellion. What a brazen act of defiance. Very uh, well, I... No, Huey Kyoma accepts your terms. His smile seems kind of fake and stiff. I'm sure he's forcing himself to go along with me. But if he doesn't do this, it'll be too painful to watch. Thanks, Okreen. I'm sorry. I buy my head and Okreen sighs in astonishment, then gently pats my head. Sheesh, what kind of ruffian thinks they're hostage? Mayushi isn't rough. Or when I timidly objected to Okreen. My stomach growls. Oh, why now? The timing is so bad. I feel my face going to catch fire. Good grief. You call yourself a rebel. Okreen pets my head again. Uh, I always like the way Okreen would pat my head or tussle my hair. And then he's done too. Just thinking about makes me want to cry. But I can't help it. Mayushi was always Okreen's hostage. I'm not used to being a rebel. What's going on? Your eyes are tearing up. Are you really that hungry? That's not it. Okreen looks troubled and confused, but he still smiles at me so kindly. I can't look him direct, look directly at him. I desperately look up at the ceiling to keep my tears from spilling down. Still, that's quite a coincidence. I haven't eaten dinner yet either. Huh? 
It's been a while. What do you say we get something to eat? Just the two of us. Okay, it's kind as ever. I think he's trying to be considerate since I'm acting so suspiciously. Sure. Then how about what you give me the orders? Like a proper rebel. Yeah, I can do that. I know how to compose myself and give Okreen my order. Hey, Okreen, take my Yushi to Kitchen Jiru. All right, let's go. Okay. Okreen puts his hand in his po coat pocket and goes out the door. I hurry after him. Things didn't go quite according to plan, but I still have time. I can take a little detour like this, right? It's right around dinner time, so Kitchen Jiru is pretty crowded. We had to wait in line for a while, then finally got seated at the counter. As soon as we're settled in, we order our usual without even looking at the menu. I'm having me menchi katsu rice. Okreen is having curry with two pieces of menchi katsu as toppings. He calls this concoction Mad Menchi Katsu Curry. Seeing that our favorite orders haven't changed makes me really happy. Mayuri. Mayuri, you've got this big smile on your face. What's going on? You're acting even stranger than usual today. I don't know, really. Just seeing here with you, waiting for usual orders, made me really happy. I mean it. So happiness can be bought for less than a thousand yen. You're really easy to please. Juicy mm, chicken number one, bananas and chow chicken make me plenty happy too. And those are even cheaper. Yep. We were awkward with each other before coming to Kitchen Jiro, but... We're at our usual shop, getting our usual order. Our usual typical conversation feels so comfortable to me. Days like these make all the bad stuff seem like a dream. I feel like these never-changing days will continue tomorrow. The day after and forever after that. I wish they would. What? Did you say something? No, it's nothing. After waiting a little while, the staff brings us trays with our plates on them. My, my tray has minchi katsu with a, a little bigger than the palm of my hand, garnished with plenty of salad. It also comes with rice and pork miso soup, so there's a lot of food on that tray. Wow, it looks so good. Of course it's good. Oh, Green boasts as though he made it himself. It feels like the usual Okreen is back, and that makes me really happy. Okreen has to be like this. Let's eat! I put my hands together and start by buying into the extra large menchi as usual. Ah! Ah, juice comes I'm pouring out from the side of the crispy fried menchi. The rice, the rich taste of meat and sweetness of onions fills my mouth. Delicious! I like smile when eating tasty food. And that smile makes me feel better. Kitchen Jiro's Menchi Katsu really is amazing. As far as Mayushi's concerned, they'll always sit on the throne as king of meat. Yeah, I vehemently degree. It's the very truth of this world. As, Okreen pour as always, Okreen pours three drops of soy sauce onto his Menchi, then grins boldly. Like this! Gastronomy crash! Gastronomy crash! Next moment, Okreen starts stabbing the menchi katsu with a spoon and mixes it into the curry. Okreen, you mean to a mess again. Such a waste. This is what puts the mad into mad menchi katsu curry. A mad scientist must eat like this. We're different ordinary people. We aren't mediocre. <laughs> It just looks like a waste of menchi katsu to me. What are you talking about? This is the apex of dining experiences. One day you too shall understand. Until then, be satisfied with your innocuous routine order. After seeing this, Okreen opens his mouth wide and stuffs his cheeks with menchi katsu curry and rice all mixed together. Mm, it's delicious as ever. You mix up your curry and eat like that since you were little, Okreen. That's because I've been mad since childhood. Huh? Really? I remember the moment Okreen became a mad scientist. No. It was a day with light rain. After my grandma died, it felt like there was a big hole in my heart. And Okreen made me his hostage. 
He said it seemed like I'd go off somewhere if he didn't. Because I'm his hostage, I'm not allowed to go anywhere. Mary, you're spacing out. You're wide open. Ugh, and his cheeks still stuffed with Menchi Katsu curry. Suddenly so thrust a spoon at my Menchi Katsu. My food! Ah, That's my Yushi! He's still buying my Menchi Katsu. Yeah, <laughs> unpreparedness is one and greatest foe. You let your, da, your, down your guard around your hostage. You're always like this, Okrini, a total Menchi Katsu thief. You already have two spoons, have two as toppings. Are you thinking mine too? Menchikatsu covered in curry is good, but I still want the taste of plain Menchikatsu as well. Uh, you, will you give me a bite of yours too? You complain about the way I eat and now you want some? <gasps> yeah, it doesn't look good, but it might taste good. Of course it tastes good. See for yourself, you non-believer. A cream uses a spoon to, uh, use a spoon to scoop up a bite of mad Menchikatsu curry, then extends it towards my mouth. Seems like it's only a couple of two, so I start to feel embarrassed. You know, I feel nothing when I do it for customers at May Queen Pusty on Squared. Mm. Huh. It's good. As I've told you countless times, don't allow its grotesque appearance to fool you. I thought mixing it with curry would take away the crispness of the Menchikatsu, but it didn't. It's still crispy and delicious. Indeed. It's also highly efficient, allowing for the consumption of multiple favorite foods at once. There'd be no exaggeration to say that it's a that's a well that's a well considered a supremely balanced food. You see now how that it's befitting that it's a fitting dinner for a mad scientist. As Okrain starts lecturing me, he quietly moves the spoon and scoops up more curry. It's not that the reminded, but I feel a warm a warm deep in my chest when I think about how we just shared an indirect kiss. We kissed back when we were kids, but we were just playing. All of a sudden, I remember that clear as day. Why did I forget until now? Um, hey. You ever remember something from the past out of the blue? Hmm? What's this all of a sudden? Well, I mean, it's normal to forget about stuff, but sometimes you remember things at a specific moment. I think it makes you feel at ease somehow. What is that did you recall? That's secret. Come on, you can't bring that up and just not tell me. How can you, do you still remember? Remember what exactly? You know, back when we were kids and we were, were playing around and kiss. <laughs> Ukraine starts choking. I'm sorry, Ukraine. Are you okay? You can't say shit like that, Myra. <laughs> I rub his back and hand a tissue and a glass of water. A green blows his nose to, uh, to the tissue and then gulps down the water. <laughs> you can't surprise me with stuff that I've already completely forgotten about. A green's as bat lying as ever. And I feel a giggle coming out. On. I see. So you forgot. That's too bad. If you don't want any more Menchi Katsu stolen from you, you better quiet down and eat quick. Okay. Uh, Okreen's worrying. I hurry to stuff my face with Menchi Katsu. Out of the corner of my eye, I see Okreen looking sour as he silently scoops his, as curry, and I can't help but wish. If only this relaxed and carefree, happy time would continue forever. I kept doing time leads that could. A strong temptation pulls at my heart. Hey, Mary. You stopped eating. Oh, no, no, no. Do not, of all people, do not let that corrupt Mayuri. We are not doing a Suzua ending, but with Mayuri. Do not make her repeat these past couple days over and 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 over again. Oh, sorry. Sorry. That's no good. Christian told me that repeating the same time over and over is nothing more than escapism. I think she's right. No matter how much it might hurt, we we have to move forward. I'm scared that things could change, but they need to change. So, Mari, exactly how long do I need to remain your hostage? For the rest of the day, okay? Is there somewhere you want me to accompany you? An at cafe or to an anime song marathon at karaoke? No, I don't really feel like any of those right now. Then why did you take me hostage? 
That's some... Okay, and suddenly asked me three, and I'm at loss for words. I merely tried copying Okrin's exaggerated speech. <laughs> it's so you cooperate with my Yushi's scheme. Is he suspicious? I look at Okrin, he's pointing his index finger up and shaking his head side to side. <laughs> Your laugh is inadequate. I've never heard such a sad excuse for an evil laugh in my life. Mayuri, this is our true villain maps. <laughs> Eric customers are stopped by Okreen's son laughter. Okreen pays no attention to his surroundings and keeps slapping his head off. At glance, Okreen is no different from usual. However, it seems like empty cheer, or like he's forcing himself. Okreen always hides his true feelings with the mad scientist mess. I'm sorry, Okreen. But please, endure it just a little while longer. After filling our bellies at Kitchen Jiro, we take a little walk around Akihabara as usual. After that, we get on the Yamanote line train. Our destination is Ikebukuro. <sighs> that was good. It's been a while since I had Minchi Katsu Raisa. It's, it's perfect. <sighs> yeah, I'll say. I always start feeling cheerful when I eat something good. For sure. But, Okreen, was it really okay for you to pay for me? It won't kill me to cover you once in a while. Besides, I'm your hostage right now, and you're always providing the lab with bananas. I'm not really providing them. I buy them because I want to eat them, but you use them for your experiment. Don't be stingy over mere bananas. But they're always jelly or mushy afterwards, so that's, so that's no good. You're desecrating them. You should value your fro Ugh. Those bananas are turning in their graves. Experiments require sacrifices. Such sacrifices have led to grand inventions. You should be proud of those bananas. I she would prefer to be able to eat them instead. It's supposed to be the usual trivial chat. Okreen turns gloomy at my words. Well, he might be right. The joke atmosphere has completely disappeared and been replaced by a serious one. Okreen? They say that curiosity killed the cat, after all. Okreen smiles cynically and looks at me like he's in pain. If someone's going to be destroyed, they should be the one responsible. I could accept suffering at one's own hands, but it's wrong for innocence to be caught in a crossfire. Ugh. There's torment in his eyes. Until Christian told me I had no idea why Okreen would look at me like this once in a while. And now I know. Okreen blames himself. Because he changed the world line, Mayushi's supposed to die. But Okreen, Mayushi really likes the wonder in your eyes when you're working on the phone wave, Chan. Really? Yeah, you get so immersed, you even forget to eat your sleep. I can just feel your excitement just by watching. I don't really get complicated stuff, but making costumes near you while you work makes it feel like I'm inventing great things with you. I think your, your over-the-top curiosity is actually a treasure. Mayuri. Okreen's pain face softens just a little bit. But just at that moment... The train arrives at Ueno Station. The doors open, flooding a train with a hundred num huge number of people. A big backpack pushes against my back, and I'm basically thrown forward into Okreen's chest. Mayuri, you okay? I'm fine. Mm. You don't seem very fine. It must be tough being small at times like this. Can you breathe? Somewhat. My feet spin against Okreen's belly and it's hard to breathe. Just hold on for a little while. Okreen is trying to shield me from the people around us. Yeah. It's almost like he's embracing me. I'm stuck against Okreen's body and my face gets hot. The train finally starts moving again. Every time the train sways, my face is pressed into Okreen's chest. The sun gives me a sense of relief, but it also makes my heart race. I start to panic. Since we're stuck this closely together, Okreen might feel my heart pounding. Myri, if anyone tries anything weird, tell me right away. Weird? 
You're pretty absent-minded, so you can get targeted by a molester. Yeah, I'm not absent-minded. I'm actually paying a lot of attention. <laughs> then tell me, what do you see? You're always so mean, Okreen. Puff up my cheeks and rest my head against Okreen's chest. Hmm? What is it? Nothing. I see. I thought you were sleepy after eating or something. Uh, that's not it. It's really calming, yet my heart is pounding so hard. It feels like you'll turn inside out. I'm thankful for this pack train. Oh, Green. Thank you. Hmm? For what? For lots of different things. <laughs> You're weird. Spice mocking, he strokes my head. <laughs> what? No, it's nothing. Stroking my head is like a habit for Ocarine, so it probably doesn't mean anything to him. It's special to me. I don't want to forget Ocarine. I tightly grip Ocarine's coat. I am scared what she's going to send. She's going to try and fix things all by herself, and I'm terrified. I don't know if you heard me or not, but Okreen silently continues to hold me close. I'm scared. Is she gonna try and find a way of... Is she gonna try and find a way... Of making them forget about her or something, maybe? That's enough to mysteriously calm my unease. It takes a little over 10 minutes or minutes to reach Ikebukuro. The time limit is slowly but surely approaching. I'm scared. When we reach Ikebukuro, we head to Grandma's grave. I thought of all kinds of places, but this is the only place that seemed right. Didn't we just visit her grave the other day? Or are you trying to te uh, test of courage? No, I'm not testing my courage. I'm not scared of ghosts or anything anyway. You're a lot braver than you look, Mayuri. <laughs> I'm still a little scared of bad ghosts, but I mean, I'm see Grandma's ghost. That's what I meant. I see. Yeah, that wouldn't be so bad. This is a special place to me. So I come here to, or for walks every once in a while. It's quiet, and the view of the stars is pretty. It's really calming. I see. This place is like a sanctuary for you. A uh, sanctuary? I guess that's close enough. You know what that is, do you? Sengshu is, is a vegetable used to wrap meat. Don't just go along with whatever I say. <gasps> well, whatever. This is the usual place. Anyway, what would you like me to do as your hostage? This is my Yishi spot. You should sit down too, Okreen. I sit down on the brown stone near Grandma's grave. Then scoot over a bit to make room for Okreen to sit. He sits down next to me. I look up at the night sky and see the stars spread out across the whole thing. Look, Okreen. Your stars are amazing. Aren't, aren't they pretty? Yeah. The stars are really are the priests from here. The darker it is, the easier it is to see stars, after all. Yeah, but that's not the only reason. It's, it's because this place is, sa is a sanctuary for me. I think that makes it, them seem even prettier. It's sanctuary. Sounding sounds like a case of subconscious compensation, which is one of your fortes, I must say. Yep. Two of us sit side by side, silently staring up at the night sky. Looking up at the starry sky when it's so quiet makes me feel like I'll be sucked into it. Time slowly passes by in silence. I always sit here. I look up at the sky and think about all kinds of things. For a while, you would come here every day. And you would come with me. You're my hostage, after all. It's my duty to keep watch over you. I really owe you for that. No, it's not just that. You're always helping me so much, Okreen. I'm sorry. Why are you apologizing? Because I'm causing trouble for you. Watching over you is no big deal. Oh, Cream, you always said that. You're always, you've always spoiled Mayushi, but I started thinking that we can't keep that up. 
What's wrong, Mayuri? You've been acting strange today. Did something happen? It's nothing. You're a bad liar, Mayuri. I don't think I'm as bad as you are. I'm bad at lying. Yep, you've only ever told me gentle lies, right? But I could tell. What are you even talking about? I honestly have no idea. You must be imagining things. Subscon subconscious compensation is your forte, after all. A green face ignorance with a forced look of confusion, but I and I can't help but laugh. <laughs> Sheesh, you're always so, you've always been so stubborn. You never change. Well, sorry, that's the star I was star I was born under, so I can't help it. Don't blame me on the stars. Our conversation pauses and we're surrounded by silence again. I look at the night sky again and search for the usual star. Among the gently twinkling stars, I quickly find the North Star, Polaris, shining especially bright. Found it. Found what? The star that Grandma told me about. Grandma taught me about stars. With picture book in hand, she taught about the easiest to find stars when I was a child. Polaris is the first one Mayushi was able to find. I stand up as though drawn towards its radiance. I stretch up, reaching for Polaris. I've always been jealous of that star. Never changing, always shining in the same place. I wish Grandma could have stayed with me forever, just like it has. Stardust Sanchek. I guess old habits never die. Yeah. If only I could grab that star. I feel like I could stay the same forever if I did. With my hands still stretched towards Polaris, I reveal the secret I hadn't told anyone before. That star. Polaris. The star that shines in the same spot forever. Never changing. Never changing. Yeah. Change can be really scary. After Grandma died, everything in my world changed. Everything turned gray and I felt nothing. It was like I was trapped in a giant maze with no sign of exit. Looking back and remembering it makes my body tremble. I was lonely and afraid. I have a hard time continuing. It's like my entire body refused to let me say anything more. But I wrapped my arms around myself to stop my trembling and managed to open my mouth to continue. This is something I need to tell Okreen at the very least. To be honest, on the day that Grandma died, we had plans to make Dongo together. She's going to teach me. But my friends invited me to go to a festival that day, and I decided to go with them. I broke my promise to Grandma. I figured I could meet Grandma whenever, so I could just visit her tomorrow. That tomorrow never came. I... I didn't know. Yeah. Grandma, she suddenly got sick. But she lived alone, so nobody knows that she had collapsed. If I kept my promise that day, Grandma might not have died. I regret it so much. I couldn't tell anyone. I was scared that people would say that I killed Grandma. Of course you didn't. But I couldn't tell anyone, and just kept thinking what if over and over. That's the only thing that swirled around in my head, and it wouldn't stop. And I realized that the world around me had turned gray. That was likely a defense mechanism of some sort. Yeah. But you were the one who saved me from that maze, Okreen. You told me where the exit was. Back then, I thought you would go off, go somewhere far away, so... There was no way I could take my eyes off you. After I became your hostage, color slowly started coming back to my gray world. Thank you for taking me hostage, Okreen. But you don't have to worry about me anymore. What does that mean? Okreen sharply glares at me, and I hesitate to keep talking. I gather up my courage and desperately go on. I don't want to be a burn to you, Okreen. I can't let myself be spoiled by your white lies anymore. Things have to change eventually. That's why. Mayuri, what... What are you saying? I take a deep breath and calm my heart. If possible, I don't want to say these words. 
I have to. After today, I'm not going to be your hostage anymore. What? What did you say? I won't accept that. You can't decide that on your own. I know that you suffered so, so much because of me, O'Green. I don't want to see you suffer anymore. Put the diary in blue, but for my back behind, behind me. And hold them out to O'Green. He wants you to hold on to these. In my place. Upa and a diary? This blue Upa is my favorite in my entire Upa collection. It's my treasure. If it's your treasure, you should hold on to it yourself. I want you to look at I have it because it's my most cherished thing. Like this blue Upa is aqua. It's the same color as my favorite dress. I'd be happy if you thought about me every time you looked at this blue Upa. Uh, don't say such strange things. Uh, of course I wouldn't forget you, so I don't need to borrow your blue Upa. Don't say that. I want you to take my diary and my blue Upa hostage in my place. Oh, Green tries to hand the diary and blue Upa back to me, but I step back. With this, there's nothing left. I have no regrets. All I need to do is press the send button on the message I prepared beforehand. My thumb hum hovers on over the send button on my cell phone behind my back. This email is the door to, is the door to the past where I never became Okreen's hostage. Oh God! What? Are you oh no! A message to fulfill the promise I broke with Grandma that day. So she could get help. A message I'll send him. I'll send him my mom's cell phone in the past. Maybe. Murray. What are you doing? Don't tell me you... Oh, Green. Let's meet again sometime. I'm sure we will. Right? When Okreen notices me holding my cell phone behind my back, he grabs onto me. Uh, it's email! Uh, Myri, stop! He's really strong. He grips my wrist and tries to get the phone out of my hand. I'll see you again. Okay. I try my hardest to smile. I'm frustrated that no matter how hard I try, it's a crying smile at best. Ayushi always, always wanted to be your... Right before I'm about to drop the phone, I press the send button. The next moment, everything around me goes quiet. It's so quiet, my ears hurt. Okreen's saying something. I can't hear anymore. I don't know what he's saying. It's the same as back when Grandma died. In the span of a moment, the world was painted completely gray. Oh, God. The cemetery is totally silent at night. It's really calming. Oh, no. What just changed? I don't think it's scary at all. It's the place where my beloved Grandma rests, after all. So her grandma's still dead. I welcome grandma's ghost anytime. The moonlight gently illuminates my surroundings. The moon's so pretty. For a while, I'm totally entranced by the moon floating in the night sky. I'm glad it was sunny for your memorial service. Rain seems to follow me wherever I go, so I was kind of worried. Especially, everyone always asks me not to ask me not to make it rain, especially mom. I looked down at Grandma's grave and smile. In front of the grave is a bouquet of lilies and some dongo that I offered. These two things are absolutely necessary for visiting Grandma's grave. Just then, I suddenly sense someone's presence and look up. I look around. Nobody's here. The same sights are all around me, with no changes from before. I feel like someone's here just now. Was it just my imagination? I look around again. But just as I thought, I'm the only person here. Still, I'm sure I felt someone nearby a moment ago. I tilt my head, confused. I thought someone might come be out here for a test of courage or something. A test of courage. I feel like that someone had mentioned a test of courage to me. That's impossible. How weird. I'm the only person here. Maybe I fell asleep for a moment. And that was just a dream. Uh, the sort of dream I always get in when I start nodding off in class after lunch. 
He was pretty busy with a, with Grandma's memorial service, after all. Maybe I'm just tired. After the service, I said goodbye to my mom and everyone and came here to visit Grandma's grave. I squat down in front of the grave and put my hands together. Grandma, I made your favorite dango this year, too. I made the way you taught me, same as always. Stars in the night sky twinkle. Like they're agreeing with what I said. I'm glad we were able to make dango together before you died. Every memorial service, I think about how glad I am I kept my promise to you. One little mistake, and I might, might not have been able to do that. The day before Grandma died, I had plan made plans to make dango with her. But on that day, my friends invited me to go to the summer festival, so I was thinking about putting my plans with Grandma off for another day. However, Mom told me to keep my promises, no matter how small they may seem. So I decided not to go to the summer festival and went to visit Grandma's house. I still think it's strange how Mom knew about our plans together. Do you have any idea of why, Grandma? That day, Grandma and I made, made an eight dongo together and had a great time. But after a while, she collapsed. I called Mom as fast as I could, and Grandma was carried off to the hospital in an ambulance. However, she still Ill passed away in the middle of the night. I'd broken my promise with Grandma that day. I thought I would have regretted it so much. To tell you the truth, Grandma, once in a while I have a dream that I broke my promise with you. It's a really scary one. I'm a dream where I'm trapped in a gray world, and I can't hear or feel anything. But there's always someone who saves me. Every time I have a nightmare, he appears from somewhere and saves me. I don't think I know it. I don't think I know him, but I feel like it's not it's not the first time we've met. Maybe it's because he keeps appearing in my dreams. Feels like we met somewhere a long time ago. I see. In this timeline, Okri never makes Mayuri his hostage. I wonder why. I suddenly feel tightness in my chest. Huh? Before I know it, a tear falls from my eye. It surprises me. But nothing sad happened. The tears start falling down from my cheeks one after another. I don't know why I'm crying, and I have no idea what to do. I feel like I've lost something very dear to me. I have a feeling, but I don't know what it is. It's very sad and painful. Only like Grandma was around for times like this. Grandma, I want to see you again. I take Pocky out. Put it up to my ear and close my eyes. I remember the way Grandma would always smile when she listened to what I had to say. When I do this, I feel like Grandma's with me. I don't know why, but I start to feel a little less lonely and uneasy. E However, the feeling of having a hole in my heart doesn't change. One year passed. Exam studies have gotten extra tough ever since I became a third year. My upcoming summer break will probably be spent mostly in cram school. But I decide it'll definitely make time to participate in summer Kamima. I've been steadily making preparations. Winter Kamima will be right before exams, so I think going th to that might be asking a little too much of myself. So I want to enjoy summer Kamima as much as I can to make up for it. Mayushi, Fubuki-chan, and Kaei-chan are planning on go going as match girls from Domo Dogi this year. Today's a long needed day off, so I went to visit the maid cafe where Fabuki works part-time. Part she gave me a small bamboo branch as a present. Working at a maid cafe seems fun. I want to try it sometime. I'll definitely give a maid once exams are over. She's quite excited about the do Omadogi outfits. They got a lot of frills, so they seem harder than make than usual. Are you going to be okay? I'm perfectly fine with last year's outfits. This one just hurts. I'm going to be real with you. I I feel my heart hurt. They don't deserve to forget each other. My ear, you've changed too much. But you're alive. I'll definitely become a maid once exams are over. Maybe she's been lucky you to enjoy the, so many fun days like this one. I'm more than blessed with great friends. But still, I wonder why. Once in a while, I feel like something's missing. Even though nothing should be missing, I start thinking that I'm just spoiled by luxury. At the same time, I feel like maybe that's not quite it. There's a hole deep in my heart, and it worries me once in a while when it starts hurting. That's not all. 
Sometimes I suddenly st can't stop crying or start doing other strange things. Ever since visiting Grandma's grave last year, I have this strange worrying feeling like I'm not quite myself. It's a gloomy feeling. Like something's different, but I have no idea what. I stop and sigh. No, no, Day Tanabata. I won't enjoy if I feel my all gloomy. I need to change my mood. Every year for Tanabata, I look forward to buying a small bamboo at the flower shop, hanging cars with squishes written on them, and eating dango while looking at the starry sky. Ah, right. Well, I'm at, I, maybe I should wish for this gloomy feeling to go away. I get happy when I come up with a good idea. I look up at the night sky. The sky is too bright from all the city lights. Like there's a thin haze covering the whole thing. I figured this place would be too bright. You can barely see any stars. I was going to head straight home to Ka Kamada, but I got caught, caught up at the station's ticket gate. My pass is gone. That's strange. I'm sure I put it in my bag. Ugh. That reminds me, I tripped up and fell at the maid cafe I visited today, and everything spilled out of my bag. Maybe I forgot to pick it up? I s try sending a message to Fabuki-chan. Lost item. But it's my pass anywhere at the cafe, I think I lost it. But once I do, I realize something. Fabuki would still be on her shift, so she can't check her messages. I have no choice. I have to go back to the cafe. Huh? Did I take the wrong street? This isn't the white street with the main cafe on it. It's a back alley. Hmm. What should I do? I keep walking, looking around. I suddenly stop in front of an old building. Oh god. What? The first floor is selling... It's a store selling old TVs, while the second floor window has a sign saying room available. Oh. Too much has changed. I don't like this. It's true that Mayuri's alive and heck, I would even I would even believe Carisu's alive, but this doesn't feel right. This building. What is this? Looking up at it makes me feel really sad for some reason. Wait. Up on the roof. Is someone up there? It's too dark to tell for sure, but I feel like I saw someone's silhouette. I'm just seeing things, right? And even if someone was up on the roof, it doesn't have anything to do with me. I admire myself as the gloomy feeling inside my chest was bigger and bigger. Why do I feel like this? I can't but be curious about the shadow I saw on the roof. I try to ignore and walk past the building, but my feet won't move. The feeling of wanting to check on the on the identity of the silhouette is too strong. I need to take a look. So I, I slowly walk up the building's old stairs. The staircase is pitch dark without a light to be to be seen, but I slowly climb to the climb up to the roof. The building's rooftop is just as dark and totally silent. Um, is someone there? I try. I look around, and try calling out. However, there's no reply, and no signs of anyone's presence. Is it really just Mayushi's imagination? I tilt my head, look up at the night sky, and notice that it's filled with stars. Wow, you can see the stars pretty well in Akiba. That too. I didn't know. The development around the station is thriving, so it's bright even at night. But there are lots of old shops around this building, and most of their shutters are closed right now. All the empty buildings normally seem scary to me, but for some reason, this place doesn't seem scary. Doesn't scare me at all. I wonder why. It feels really nostalgic. This should be my first time here, but I feel like it isn't. No, it's more than that. I feel like I finally returned. I want to see you. I whisper this without realizing it. Who am I whispering to? I don't know. I feel like there's someone really important to me, who I haven't met in a really long time. Just like the legend of Tanabata. I wonder if Orihime and, Orihime and Hikoboshi managed to meet. I can continue looking up at the night sky and imagine. A couple who can meet only once a year. And if it rains, they can't even do that. They need to wait at least another year. 
That would be really disappointing. But because of that, when they do manage to meet, I'm sure they're super happy. It's way better than never being able to meet again. I looked down at the small bamboo branch in my hand. Maybe I should make a wish? I take a loose leaf, a loose leaf piece of paper out of my bag, crease it into a long and thin and rectangle, and tear it into a strip by hand. I intend to wish for this gloomy feeling to go away, but I don't think that would be very interesting. I go with a different wish. May those who want to see each other meet. meet. I write a vague wish onto the paper. I worry that I might be asking the gods for too much as I thread a string through the card and tie it to the bamboo branch. I grasp the bamboo branch with the card hanging from it and hold it up to the night sky. May this wish reach heavens. As usual, I was subconsciously searching for a star. I quickly find it. The one always shining in the same place. Polaris. The first star that Grandma ever taught me about. I gaze up to it and feel like crying. Grandma, you said before that people who want to see each other will always meet again someday. That's fate. I don't think there's someone I want to see, but... I think there's someone I want to see, but I don't know who. If I don't know who it is, then I wish to see them. Who is seem still me? I stand on tiptoes, praying with all my heart and extend the bamboo branch towards the North Star. May we meet again somehow. Please, hear my wish. I wish as hard as I can. Then... Stardust Handshake. There's a voice behind me. And when I hear that low voice, my whole body trembles and I choke up. That voice is too nostalgic. I want to turn around, but I'm too afraid. Who are you? I'm still frozen in the spot and trembling, and trembling, tremblingly ask the figure behind me. Sheena Mayuri, you should know full well who I am. Why do you know my name? I... I know you. I've been searching for you all this time. I'm suddenly embraced from behind... I... Oh. A nostalgic scent fills my lungs. It's an impossible situation. And mysteriously, my heart is calm. I heard tears falling from both my eyes. You've been looking for me the whole time? Yeah. That's right. Why? Who are you? When you were a child, you lived in Ikebukuro. Do you remember the little brat you played with in the neighborhood? His words bring the past back to me. That's right. After Grandma died, I moved to Kam Kamada, where I live now. Until then, I lived in Ikebukuro. There was a boy a little older than me who I often played with, I think. He was full of curiosity and always getting into mischief. The grown-ups around town were constantly scolding him. I think his name was... Rintaku? Oh, It's been a while. Did anyone call me that? His sad voice makes my chest tighten up. In this world line, to you, I'm just a random boy who you played with a long time ago. He embraces me so strongly I can barely breathe. I can tell that Rintaku is trembling just as much as I am. But a hostage cannot quit of her own accord. Hugh and Kyoma would never allow such a thing. No matter where you flee, I should not allow you to escape. Hostage. Hugh and Kyoma. His exaggerated manner of speech. Everything is so nostalgic. Too nostalgic. It's nostalgic. I still can't remember. And it breaks my heart. I can't stop crying. Good grief. What a troublesome hostage. How much searching do you think I had to do? He strokes my head. Having my head stroked like this feels really pleasant. Thank you. For finding me. Wow. Wow. I don't even know what to say. Um, 
that was awesome. And I imagine, now that that's done, sure enough, one last chapter. Uh, oh, interesting. First off, look at the name change. Uh, at the bottom it says Chapter Oka, but you switch to this one, it says Chapter Kyo. Uh, I just noticed the divergence. 4.456441 Abduction Across Three Worlds. I'm... Wait a minute. That... 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 This is the only one that is... That is a... 4% divergence. I think this might be the final one, so we'll save it for next time. Man, that one. Ugh. I feel like if I think too much on it, I'm going to cry, so I'm going to delete my brain real quick. But before I do that, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you all later. Peace. <laughs>